All right, everybody, we're about to go live. All you people that got to see this ahead of time. I'm going to edit it out of the other YouTube video. All right, David, so which one do we do? Do we do Kelly's or Mike's? I don't, which one I do don't we do? Can, I don't think you can legally do Kelly's. I can too. I, she said I could. She did? All right, we're going to start with You me. just lied? Did you just lie to me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember everything she tells me. But you just said she said you could. Well, you know, we talk every day, David. <laughs> She's like a daughter to me. Until, until, until or, we talk to Or you. that niece I never had. Yeah. Until we hear from her. <laughs> for this season, I think you should play Mike's. This is Kelly Wentworth from Survivor. Oops, wrong one, people. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Mike Holloway, winner of Survivor Worlds Apart. And you're about to listen to a podcast with two best friends that love to talk about the game that we all love, Survivor. So sit back, grab a Dr. Pepper, because I'm 155,000% sure you're about to love to listen to Dwayne and Day. Yeah. Take it away, guys. If you haven't loved it before, you're about to. Did you give him a short script that he just kept going on Man, and on? I didn't give him anything. Oh, really? Uh -uh. That was pretty good then for that <laughs> script. He just, he just kind of, by the way, David, I'm upset. Hi, I, yes, I am, David. Uh, I haven't done that part yet, <laughs> okay. but well, I'm upset because, because I was looking for, for my, uh, my bracelet in my bag and I think you took it. Look, I just put my initials on a bag that didn't have any initials because I figured I could take it as my bag. And I, uh -huh. I, 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 I don't know. You what didn't else to say. Uh, you didn't bother to check to see if there was a five thousand dollar not real gold bracelet in there, did you? My power bracelet. No, 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 no. I just saw a bag with no name on it and put my name on it. So I thought I could do that. Well, I gave you the benefit of the doubt, and I didn't tell anybody. But I feel like there's a bag <laughs> shoved up somewhere. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> hey everybody, this is uh, Dwayne here And David And we're just two best friends talking about the show we love Survivor That was a little joke on Abby Who I, I thoroughly enjoyed watching last You know night why you enjoyed her? It. Because you enjoyed her in the Philippines And she's the same person she was in the Philippines So I know, and so many people hate her And I just, I mean, I like watching her I like watching Chaos Cast what is it with me? <laughs> You're a villain at heart. <laughs> I like watching because it was so funny because Abby, you could just tell she's like, I, I want to kill somebody, but instead I'm going to just put all of this energy in, into a little bottle and not get mad. <laughs> think, it's funny. It's fun count, to watch her. They count one, two, I need to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, we'll, we'll we will get to that later because I got some I got some interesting insight on that from my own from the right side of my brain. Okay. Tell in my left side of the brain. But uh, what an excellent premiere! Did you not enjoy that ninety minute premiere? I mean, it's it's right up there, top three f for me, if not the best. I challenged someone to remind me of a better opening fifteen minutes. That just the first fifteen minutes, and that's right where it stopped. Uh, when no, Probst gave his 18. interview. Oh, well, maybe that was the end of the credits. By the time I got to the end, oh, it was 18. But okay. good, ah, goodness, what a great – I mean, I'm telling you, the creators of this season, the writers of this season are throwing yeah. everything at them. I love the music, it. music – even the music was great. I'm not even talking about the credits. I'm talking about the fact that they threw the twist in. You know? Oh, yeah. That was yeah. amazing. Man, good stuff. So we have a lot to cover tonight. So hold on. Settle in. As I like to say when I'm driving and taking a curve really fast – Hold on to your underwear. It's going to be a long night. But not, <laughs> We've when, got... but not when I'm in your little car because I can't reach anything in that little car. <laughs> you should have seen when David came over to my house. Try... I have a 1999 Miata. And David was like, <laughs> I had to get a shoehorn to get him out. Can you, can you anyway, feed me my drink because I can't reach anything? That's about <laughs> what it was. We have recap. We have listeners' thoughts, which is known as feedback. We have iTunes reviews. We've got Miko's Challenge. This year, I'm going to win Miko's Challenge. Positive attitude. Good job. That's good to win. And we've got our D&D &D fantasy points, thanks to Shayna. <laughs> Shayna stayed up last night for however long and watched the episode again 
and logged every single point for the D&D Survivor Challenge. My friends, Shayna deserves ultimate praise and lifting up and giving her lots of money. Okay. So we'll let someone else Just do, do another round of applause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, here we go. <laughs> Since we don't have any of the other stuff to give her. So. Yeah. Brian Marr has already submitted his blog on the premiere. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I'm sure it's good. You can find it on our website, stwdd.com, or just look up Survivor Talk. We are the top one. So we have four bloggers, and they'll all be writing for this season or and for this episode, so go check it out. Speaking of our website, many of you are watching live. Thank you. It's nice to have you. Hope you like our new live watch page with the video on the left and the chat room on the right or some of you may be watching on youtube but anyway it's good to have you here and have fun in the chat room talking to each other so recap initial thoughts david i have four initial thoughts do you have some i actually didn't write them down i just i just i just was so excited by the end of this thing that everything was in my head but i'll i'll see if i can match you thought for thought i'm not going to go six though i can tell you that right now <laughs> <laughs> Well, I actually wrote these down before I watched the episode again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, David, I heard you were having. Uh, David, how is your body feeling? It, my, your, my back is a little sore. Is your back okay? So, David, if you if you let me pull up my there we go. So, if if you just go like this, David, right? For those of you who can't see, I'm doing yoga. Go like this, David. Now, go like that. It'll help your back. <laughs> you're doing dwoga is what you're doing. <laughs> All right. Now, here's one. Lean over like this. Anyway. Awkward chest stretch and pelvic thrust at camp equals early boot. That's my first initial thought. My 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 addition to that is <laughs> if professionally, if you if you had that occupation and was wearing what he was wearing. You wouldn't be in that occupation long, I would imagine. You might get arrested. I don't know, but just... Here's here's the thing about Vetus, all right? If I went out there or you went out there and said, hey, I can help you with your back, try this stretch, that'd be different than Vetus because Vetus is like, so, how's the back? Oh, yeah. How's your, how's your body, Abby? I mean, yeah. how is your body? But, would you would you like a shoulder rub? I mean, he's got this like sultry voice that you know. Anyway, and the chat room spoke up and said, "Please don't hurt yourself, Dwayne." Yeah. Well. <laughs> hey, got my Survivor Talk shirt on. Hey, do. Watching Abby Maria contain herself was so much fun. It's like she had to keep reminding us how she's containing herself. It's great. She's like a um, a, a, a two liter drink that you shake up. But it's got little pinholes where every now and then something comes out. Just take that bag and stick it up, or just, yeah. just I'm not uh, just little things that pop up every now and then. For the most part, yeah. she held it in. She did, and she had a yeah. conversation with her afterwards. So, so I give I give her credit for that. But yeah, she's still ready to explode. Yeah. Uh, another initial thought, Lady Wentworth, you are amazing. Absolutely amazing. Most in, one of the most intense moments I've ever seen. In Survivor, and it was during a challenge. I could have cared yeah. less about the challenge. Stop showing me Kelly fail trying to reach the key. Show me Kelly looking back eight times, according to the camera. I mean, I'm sure it was more, but the camera right. look, hit her eight times looking back, and on the ninth time, she yeah. went back and got it. That and and was if you awesome. looked at, if you looked at the way she's standing, she's standing like I'm about to move. Yep. Did you you, you notice that? It's like she's not even. Somebody could have said, hey, Kelly, what do you think Kelly should do? And she would have went, what? Where? When? <laughs> exactly, exactly. What was interesting was that if you read some of the articles today, there were people watching, uh, including Parvati, and some people were watching her to see if she could do it. So it's good that they didn't react or give anything away oh, yeah, yeah, by yeah. watching her. But then again, who's paying attention to them when they're watching the challenge? They, they want to make right. sure they're not the first one's gone. Speaking of Kelly... I'll speak of somebody else that I am so glad he is playing is Varner. My goodness. I mean, I want to know why Jeff Varner is Jeff Varner and not, not Varner or Jeff. Everybody else yeah, has got really. a one name name and then we get Jeff Varner, you know? Yeah. So, but Let's my just call him Varner. We're going to call it Varner because I am so glad he's playing. He's so honest. He's so, you know, 
he, he doesn't care what you hear him say. He's just going to tell you what he feels. But I love how, how he wakes up in the morning and I am in a world spin. I'm in a head spin right now. I, just, <laughs> I don't know what day it is. Then he, yeah. It's just, I just love his honesty about it and how, how he's being so forthright. And whether he's playing it up or not, you know, telling these younger survivor players, hey, just tell me what to do. Is this how it's played now? You know, is, yeah. is that part of his strategy or is that really him? It's hard to tell, but I love his, his – um, he get he got bit while he's sitting there giving a confessional, <laughs> <laughs> and it just so happened to rhyme with what he was saying. Gas, yeah, she, she stepped on, on the, the gas. gas. What just bit? Yeah, yeah, that was that's one of my initial reactions was that. <laughs> well, I think Varner is playing. I think Varner's doing a good job of trying to play both old and new school. Uh, he even said so in the trial. Absolutely council. agree. Yep. So, and uh, oh, poor Fishback. You got to have one every season, I guess, and he gets the silly music. Yeah. Poor, so. poor guy. It's like, we're going to take away your glasses and we want you to see how well you can see without them. Cause I couldn't right. tell if he was going to get sick or if he was just upset about something, but they just, they said like, I guess that was probably his worst moments. Maybe he wasn't feeling yeah. good. Not, not the most appealing moments for him though. So the opening of the show, I loved how they, are we start, took us. are we starting the show or are we finished with initial reactions? I'm sorry. Do you have more initial thoughts? One more. I have an analogy. Do you remember Iron Man one, the first Iron Man movie? As opposed to Iron Man 1, the second Iron Man movie? (laughs) (laughs) To to me, this episode was about as good as it can get except for one thing. And with the first Iron Man movie, with all the buildup, with all the hype and stuff going into it, there was a lot of buildup and hype for this, which was good. And the the episode delivered except for the kind of ending, which was kind of obvious to me as to who was going to go. And the same thing with Iron Man. It was kind of obvious what was going to happen at the end. But the rest of it was just awesome. And that's the first thing that popped in my head for some reason was the first Iron Man. It just, you came out of the Iron Man movie so awe and, and, and loving it and saying, yeah, the ending was okay, but the whole movie was great. That's what right. this first episode was for me. The ending was okay. You kind of knew who was going to go. But the whole episode was just great. And, all, and also, one other reaction was, this is why I didn't care about watching videos beforehand. Because we got all almost all the information they probably shared on the beach. We got it under duress, under stress, and after they were talking amongst each other face to face. We kinda got here's how I what I liked about it was here's how I messed up and here's what I wanted to do different. And I love that. That was great editing. And um, that was one of my first thoughts is this is why I didn't care about watching videos preseason, because I knew we were gonna get everything almost in the first episode. Yeah. So be interesting to see if anybody that watched them all would say that uh they got more from those than they did from the first episode. Um, Susan Appleby put in our chat room that Stephen Fish, oh, Fishback wrote in his blog that he was sick. So oh. yeah, he was feeling sick. Oh, may have been that swamp he went in. <laughs> My goodness. You know, I saw a movie. I saw a movie stand by me. And from that moment on, I never went in swamps. <laughs> I don't know. Seeing Fishback going that swamp. <laughs> I don't want to go in those anymore either. All right, so I really enjoyed how they did the opening. <clears throat> they show us their trek from coming into the town, mm-hmm. driving through, finding a boats and all that stuff. And meanwhile, as they do all of actually they started getting off the plane, didn't they? I think they started that that early. And they start and and um uh, and meanwhile, we get all of these confessionals mm-hmm. as they're coming off. It was just so good. Absolutely so good. Yeah. And uh, it went from the truck to the ruins and then to the boat. Yes. But I think it showed him getting in the bus, leaving the studio. That's about where it started. Yeah. 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 Trying to make us feel like they went straight there, which we know they didn't, but still. Yeah. It's still fun. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Joe didn't go home, take a shower, and return either. There's a little bit more gap in there than that. Yeah. (laughs) Jeff Pro's like, it's like I was just here with you two weeks ago. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Somebody put on uh, on our Facebook group um, that Probst asked Kelly Wentworth, not Kelly Wentworth, I'm sorry, Ke- uh, Wiggles, Carrie, Kelly Wiggles, um, do you think about that tribal every day of your life? No. No. Cut. Say yes. Action. Do you think of that every day of your life? No. <laughs> yes. Cut. She ended up Do saying yes. Yeah. But, yeah. She, but did you notice that's all she said? Yeah. No other explanation well, no. whatsoever. Right. Well, she did say, I feel so old because, you know, they watched us growing up. But to answer his question, that was all she said. I think about yeah, it every day. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. 
So I really like that. I mean, talk about a fun way to get into the game. You know, just imagine you're playing the game. And you get to get on the boats, and you get to go out there, and you don't have to get out and go stand on an island with your stuff. You're in the boat, and Probst is talking to you, you know? And it's like, okay, guess what? This boat has a ton of stuff on it. Let's go. And Probst said, it's essentially your first challenge in your new tribes. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So technically, it was not a reward challenge. However, for the sake of our game, our D&D Survivor Challenge, because Prope said, essentially, this is your first challenge, and the person that got to the rice first got that as a reward, we're counting that as a reward challenge for our fantasy points. Right. So we just want you to know that that's why. We know technically it wasn't a reward challenge, but that's what we're doing. So, but man, I just, I loved it. So they all jump out. Tosh is the first one they show, and they just jump out and climb on the boat, and start grabbing as much as they could. I absolutely, hmm, I know I would have grabbed bananas, but not as many as they grab. Because after about three days, bananas are like mush. Yeah, but right? it's also immediate immediate food, though. See, what I'm thinking was when you jump on, you grab what, the first thing you grab. Because if you walk past it, it's probably not going to be there when you come back. So right. if I'm first on, I'm grabbing as I go and trying to get there. But um, I was looking at the um, the colors. It didn't strike me until I saw the paddles. You and I were talking earlier. And I'm like, uh-huh. I wonder if the paddles were designated as in, if you see something wrapped in green, don't touch it purple. Or if you see something wrapped in purple, don't touch it green. Because Keith or yeah. Jeremy picked up paddles. I think it was Keith. And they were purple, which told me, okay, those are des- designated for, for Bayonne, Bayonne. And then... Because I'm thinking, I'm grabbing both. If I see one set of paddles, I'm grabbing the other set of paddles. Yeah. I don't want the other. I'm grabbing the both. Other one to get the paddles. So that was kind of that yeah. was pretty neat. But man, that was awesome. Seeing guys, it's like probes. You might want to uh, not want to stand there. Yeah, <laughs> Varner is going for your head right now. <laughs> I know that was awesome. You, whoa, that was great. But I really liked it. What I liked about it was they didn't say you have a minute and a half. They could have stayed on the boat for five minutes awesome. and figured out exactly how they wanted to put it on their boat, on their raft and everything, if they if they wanted. But, of course, you know, they want to get to the rice, and you're in that mode. And, you know, exactly. So. And from what we could tell, no strategy. Basically, it starts now, and they got yeah. to figure out how they're going to do it, when they're going to do it, and who's going to jump, and who's going to tell them when to go. Awesome. Right. Poor, poor Tasha, you know, she as we learn later on, she probably didn't get anything off the boat because she was just – looking at Joe the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Everything she went to get, it was gone because Joe just got it. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> anyway, so I really like that. And, you know, Kelly Wiggles had a good idea. Wigglesworth had a good idea. But maybe, you know, no one else thought about it until they saw her doing it. So what if she had kind of just swam beside the – um their raft because they were ahead and then right. made a break for it because she was swimming full force a good 50 60 yards she had a nice she, lead on them yeah yeah and then she failed out so if she would have hung around then joe or joe and Wu wouldn't have caught up right mainly well Wu saw joe jump in and so knew that joe was going to pass up kelly so he he went and wooed. I wonder. And I wonder. If, yeah, I wonder if it was a split second decision because she jumps into the right of the barge and then looks at the barge and then starts swimming, almost as if there's no room for me up there. I'm just yes, going to start that, swimming. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah. That's my monster drink. Mike oh. Mike K had a good question while you're reading that in our chat room. He says, "I want. I was wondering if one tribe could ignore the rice and stay back and grab everything else left on the big boat." Can you imagine, Probst? How irritated that that would make him. <laughs> what if they just took Why the... Why are y'all going so slow? It's our strategy. What if they just took Dad, the boat? come it, speed up! Yeah. You're racing. <laughs> You're supposed to be racing. Yeah, that would have been funny. But anyway, but they got some chickens. And didn't someone say something like, we got some chickens and we're going to eat them, Kimmy? Or something like that? Yeah. A varnish or something remember. about chickens. Yeah. I don't remember who said it. but Anyway, so I, so I really thought that that was good. Um, Takeo wins reward. Wins the rice, and that and that was a lot of rice, dude. It was. That was a lot. That of rice. was. I mean, you could eat meals for days. Yeah. Now I don't know if they're going to continue to show the intro. In all honesty, I'm one of those people that I don't care. I like it when they don't show it because I can always go online and watch it if I want to see and it. It's more screen time, but I too. can't. But I can't always go online and get that extra ninety seconds of yeah. 
edited stuff on the editing floor. So I appreciate not having the intro every single episode, but I liked having it for the first episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. <clears throat> now, did you so notice t- something? Sorry. Before they jumped on the barge, I had to rewind it for Gracie. What's really neat right now for this season is Davis is picking up on Survivor. He's starting to remember things. He remembered Keith was in Blood versus Water. And oh, yeah. so last night, because it was late, I got home late, so I had to watch it with Gracie. And she's supposedly doing homework. But watched yeah. it with her. She's a senior in high school. So I watched it with her the first night. Then this morning, and then I started watching it again just to take notes last night. But then I finished it today when I got home from work and Davis was home and he starts watching it with me because he couldn't stay uh-huh. up. So I watch it at night with Gracie and then I watch it in the daytime with my 11 year old Davis. Of course, he's a question ask- asker. He likes to ask questions almost. I'm like, just listen, just listen. Are there snakes? Just listen. <laughs> Keep watching. Don't you hear what they're hearing? I got to hear what they're hearing. So, <laughs> but it's kind of neat. I get to watch Way it. Way to go, profile. Davis. Yes, distract David so he doesn't get those Mikko's challenge questions. But it's funny. I was fast forwarding to the end of the um, immunity challenge to see the, the Kelly and the idol thing. And he goes, I want to see the challenge. And I remember that's right. That's really what he wants to see is the challenge. He yeah. didn't care about the trial right. life. Yeah. So Takeo day one, Wu states a I'm recurring sorry. theme. I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I, have, I have to say there was a poor edit. A bad, bad moment. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Before when – uh. First off, I love the respect they gave for Wigglesworth with the applause. I mean, hey, that's, she's a pioneer. Give it up for her. Lost right. by one vote. Um, right. But as they're talking to her, they show a couple of facial shots of the others, and they happen to show Fishback in his Beyond tr- buff. He's already wearing his buff. And yeah. I had to go back and show Gracie, and she's like, I completely didn't see that. So yeah. she's, she's probably texting on her phone. But uh, yeah. So that was kind of neat. I just saw that. I'm like, oh, that's not good. That, that's yeah. a little missed there. But anyway, that was it. Go ahead. See, I wonder why they didn't name this episode Old School versus New School. Because that was the theme of the whole show. Well, And that, it starts off right here at the beginning. It was the theme of Takeo. I think Bayonne was male versus female was kind of the theme of that one. But I agree. It was a lot of Old School versus New School conversations. Yeah. But actually, I misread my own notes. But Wu starts off talking about, which is a recurring theme, I'm playing for everyone who voted for me. Yeah. And Spencer says it later on, you know, there's an added layer. Yeah, I think Sierra does too. And, and then Kelly. <laughs> Kelly goes up to Venus. No brother, no dad, we're all good. <laughs> and I'm thinking, the second time I watched it, and I'm thinking, and you voted them off. <laughs> Be nice you to everybody. sneaky little woman. That's right. No, no brother, no dad, we're all good. And then Kelly Wigglesworth starts working hard at camp, and she names the workers. Terry, Wu, Vita, Spencer, old school survivor. They're in there building, 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 mm-hmm. and not doing as much strategy. So, But at, at least, you know what I enjoyed about it was the old schoolers, especially Varner, recognized that they can't be all old school or they will get beaten. Yes. Yeah, I, li- I like that there's a lot of um... – recognition for the fact that we have to play the whole game because the game has changed, right. especially for Dietz. Right. He talked about, you know, just being so intent on getting the fire and the shelter and the water and not playing the social game enough. He's going to be much more aware now of the social game. Right. right. So I, I love that. That's We want to hear what how they're playing the game, and that's what we want to hear those little tidbits. I like that a lot. Right. And then I think Terry made a mistake when he was talking to Spencer because he told Spencer – that his son made a dossier of every single person that's yeah. playing. <laughs> I thought, if he could have just scary. skipped that part, just gone to the part bro. where my, where your your son, yeah. where he's where Danny's a fan of Spencer, just go yeah. right to that part. But yeah, as soon as, as soon as I said dossier, I looked at Spencer's face, and Spencer's like, "Okay, goes, you know everybody." Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> and then Spencer's like, "Hey, I like your kids because I'm not trusting you, but I want you to trust me." That's right. I love what he said, new school player, old school fan. Yep. I wrote that down, I like too. Spencer. I like Spencer a lot. I ain't going nowhere. Survivor's my game. Spencer is my name. That's right, Spencer. It's going to be hard to get rid of Spencer, man. He's playing different and better. Yeah. Yeah, they even talk Already. about how old school is shelter, fire, strategy, social. New school is strategy, social, camp, strategy, social, you know, just – so much more of the other game. opposite, yeah. not the opposite so much, but just more emphasis on on strategy, right, right into it. And then we get the Abbey Gate, <laughs> part one. Right now, you know everybody's everybody's working around camp, and Abby's like, 
Where, where is my bag? I had a bracelet in there. Did did she call it? Uh, it has. It was her superpowers bracelet. It just dawned on me what it happened was she she got called for a confessional and didn't want to do it without the bracelet. So she's That's not true. worried about anything. But the, I have to do a confessional now, and I need my bracelet. So where is yes. my bracelet? Oh, <laughs> I like man. Varner's reply. It's here somewhere. You, you, yeah, you just, which you, is true. You, think, you know, yeah. why are you stressing out over a bracelet? I mean, okay, first of all, Abby, no one stole your bracelet. So, I mean, if it was an immunity idol, maybe. Yeah. But no one stole your bracelet. So just ask everybody, hey, would you check in your bags? I think some of our bags might have gotten swapped around or whatever. And can you see, I brought this little leather thing with these big gold things. And if you touch them together, then superpowers happen. Can you check and see if... <laughs> That it would have been over. Instead, poor Abby. She just goes off and she gets upset and she gets more and more upset because she can't find her superpower bracelet. Because she hasn't fixed that part of her game. I mean, she's I, working on it. Yeah, she, should, she should have already worked on it. <laughs> it's funny. It's so funny watching this with my wife because I like watching Cass and I like watching Abby. And, it, and they irritate Connie sometimes. Well, see, you know. see, but I like watching Cass too, but she's a little more sly and in, in control oh, than yeah. Abby is. Yeah, yeah. Cass, I mean, Cass has more control of herself. I mean, I understand if this was a family bracelet or a kid bracelet, and it probably does mean something to Abby. But like you said, somebody you think somebody stole your bracelet? You've lost your bag. Your bag has disappeared, or somebody's grabbed it by mistake. So that's what you start doing is asking everybody to check their bags. So great line. So hard not to pull out the fangs. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. So, but, 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 okay, but think about this. This was a situation where you and I and most uh, everybody else in that camp would have handled it differently, right? They would have done what I said just say, hey, everybody, I think our bags got mixed up. If you find a bracelet, it's mine, mm -hmm. right? Abby doesn't handle it that way. Imagine how she would handle something like actually of substance. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> Watch out. That's right. <laughs> oh, but she's as cute as a button out there. I tell you what, she's just as cute as a button. So, all right, let's go to, let's go over to uh Bion. And I wrote it out phonetically so I'd say it right. Bion. B U Y O N. Yeah. Sierra and the ladies are weaving pawn fronds. It's, Okay, the Bayon tribe is totally different. It's like the 1950s on Survivor. All the men are out working, and the women are at home doing pawn fronds. <laughs> except for Fishback, who can't do either one. <laughs> I was going to say, he's just, he doesn't have a spot yet. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but the whole dynamic of both of these tribes is so different. But I, you know, yeah, but that's, that's like the storyline I was saying earlier when you were saying it should have been old school versus new school. This tribe is males and females. Like separation, right. you know, and I like Tasha's comment was, I'm really impressed with our males, you know, or yes. with our guys. They're really good. It's like the Flintstones. <laughs> it really is. It's like the Flintstones. It's, it, you know, and, and the ladies sit around, talk about their guys mm -hmm. while they're doing pawn fronds. And Cass is like, do you remember what you're doing, Tosh? <laughs> it's like, we could do it's like pawn fraud 101, the one thing I know how to do. It's like we're just here. And everybody's smiling at everybody. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tasha's looking at Cass going, I can't wait. I'm so mad at you from last time we played. <laughs> and then Fishback is standing in the corner wishing he knew how to chop wood or step on wood. <laughs> it makes me want to go back and watch Token Jeans again. How, how did he get through 39 days of that season? He, I know, he was crazy. really the fish out of water. I mean, this it's like, wow. I thought Varner was funny by saying he's just forgotten how to play, but Fishback is as smart as he is. I mean, you yeah. got to find some place to fit in. Maybe we just saw the few minutes he wasn't, but you just yeah. you got to find a place to fit in. All right, well, we got to speed this up. I love Keith. I'm not fumbling the ball this time. I this was funny. He goes, you know, last time I got fourth. I'm not going to change a whole lot. I'm just going to kind of tweak a couple of things. <laughs> but I'm there ain't no fumbling the ball this time. But fourth ain't no good. Yeah, four, four they no good. Hey, there's some people on your jury that would have liked to have been fourth <laughs> compared to your fourth. So, and then what do we get? We get Jeremy doing what Jeremy does, mm -hmm. right? Going out, talking to everybody. I got Keith. I got Tasha. I got Savage. I got Joe. We've got to stick together. And I, he, I felt like he said it so many times, or they showed us him saying 
that we have to stick together so many times mm-hmm. that later on he's going to get blindsided. And just, yeah, well, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. It's, I mean, he was the, he was the center point of getting all those names together. Yeah. And the one, and the one that they didn't like or Savage didn't like was Fishback. Yeah. Didn't trust I him. Did, didn't, I don't trust Fishback. Yeah. But, um, of course, like, why not? But why do you not trust him? I know. He's just sitting there. He's just a super smart guy. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can still trust him just because he's smart because he's a nerd. And that's why you don't trust him. It's like it's like they said, OK, fish back. Go over there. See that wood. We need that into three pieces. Four hours later, he's still trying to get it into three. <laughs> he's trying to hire a contractor from, from the film crew <laughs> to come cut it into three pieces. But did, all right. I'm but, sorry. But I'm I wrote sorry. down Jeremy's crew that he that you just said. And what you said, it was Keith Savage, Joe. Him and Tasha, who he called, didn't he call her like a strong challenge competitor? So it's almost like five hard bodies, five right. you know strong people. So he's not right. including the weaker people. So he's building right. kind of a male versus female thing, and including Tasha yeah. is probably the strongest female. Well, Joe, and, and then Joe later on says, you know, the alpha males can either go against each other or help each other. We're right. going to help each other. And Tasha's not a alpha male by any means but if you look at the five five women on that tribe she's i mean she's probably stronger than fish back in the challenges yeah and i you know oh yeah and i loved her uh, earlier confessional where she talked about the people at her church said uh, you got to be more mean you yeah. can ask forgiveness after day 39 <laughs> you know and that, that's that's me i'm gonna go out there and and play like i'm not not like who i am but play like i think it takes to win the game and then i'll just ask for forgiveness later so. Yeah, how'd that work for you, David? Still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> David got to play it, it in the Durham Warriors. It wasn't because I was mean. <laughs> I know. David got to play in the Durham Warriors Survival Challenge, my friends. And you need to go back and listen to our couple of podcasts about that. It is an amazing event. And uh, we're going to keep on pushing it for next year as well. We still got more podcasting to do about it. Yeah. So Fishback couldn't chop a stick. And so he decides to try Pond Fronds. Let's just go on to Takeo. <laughs> Steven, do you know how to do pot fronts? No, but I'm going to sit down with him and see if I can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, man. He's the, he's the example. Okay, right? So he's he's a know-it-all. Great, great podcast over there. Great mm-hmm. podcast. He's a know-it-all. But there's a difference in knowing it all and knowing how to do it all. Do it, a, a do-it-all, yeah. Yeah, a know-it-all and a do-it-all. All right, Takeo, day one. Vetus laying on the charm. Or not. <laughs> what what did he say he said i I'm, i was called a manipulator or something but i'm not yeah. i just try to change their persuasion to the way i want them to be or something yeah that sounds like manipulator yeah <laughs> that's what I thought too. <laughs> but I, okay kelly ain't going for it abby's abby's just flat out uncomfortable yeah it. you know like later on in the episode how's your whole body she's like no i don't need I don't, she no, that's gets okay. up Get and walks my, away. Get your hands off my shoulders, <laughs> you know. Like, Unless you have my bracelet, take your hands away I'm from me. I'm trying to connect. I'm, I'm trying to connect with you spiritually, deeply. <laughs> and I love Shireen isn't going for it at all. <laughs> I loved it. It was a great, great. Shireen's like, uh-uh, no, that ain't happening. D- this felt like a, a late-game Shireen. Just did not feel like the Shireen that we saw in the first five days of um, Worlds Apart. This felt like a strange. Right. She said, "All right, I'm just I'm continuing my game. I just came out here to play." And she goes right, right to um, who does she goes to Varner and Spencer, two nerd herds. Yes. Actually, that's three nerd herds talking to each other. And she connects. Oh, I'm so happy for you. She explains to them how Vetus is connected to Terry, which Spencer knew and Varner probably forgot. And um, and they start they start talking about the people. And I love this. This is the part of Survivor <laughs> I love. They get together a small group and just start talking about people. To start saying, let's let's get on the same page, you know. Right. And then okay, this is Varner's expression that that whole time. <laughs> can, can you go back to point number two? Let's go back a little yeah. bit. You're on number eight right now. Let's go back to number yeah. two. <laughs> she like finishes and he goes, Okay, five minutes ago you said <laughs> Vetus. What'd you say after that? <laughs> you said Vetus has a brother? <laughs> What? Wait, how could wait, how could Vetus be new school and old school? I don't under wait, what? <laughs> Varner's just like, y'all go way too fast. But hey, anybody around Shireen is gonna be like <sighs> She just processes She's so fast. Yeah, she processes. Yeah, she's quick. like boom, 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 boom. You know? 
I mean, it's, Spencer it's, could it's, handle that. But. Yeah, it's neat because you got people that think fast and talk slow, or they talk fast and think slow, but she thinks fast and talks fast. And she was right. Everything she said was right on. Yeah, and and and, and Spencer's smart enough to just not smart enough, but 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 he's that that fast minded yeah. also. So he's keeping right up with her. Yep. And you know, Farter's like walking off, going, uh, "I don't even know what's going on." Uh, that's what we get. His great confessionals, where he's like, "Yes, ma'am." Yes, ma'am. You take me out in the woods, put me on the train. I don't yeah. care who's driving the train. Yeah. Just get me on the I don't train. Care who's, yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't care who's pulling me in the woods, but it's yes. Yes. You know, I don't care. <laughs> and that's right. Varner, Varner's doing it right, man. Yep. I, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know much about Varner before this season, but I've got, I mean, if, if he was this funny before, I got to go back and watch that. He was. He was, Scoopin was the, was the, was the physical person. Varner was the articulate entertainer. He was the oh, talker. Man, I, I gotta. I mean, I've watched Australia twice, but I need to go back and watch yeah. it. Yeah. Because I mean, and uh, Varner's in our Facebook group, and he's a hoot in the Facebook group. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's he's hilarious. So. Uh, <laughs> a lot of. And then he got bit right at the end of his. <laughs> I know. That was great. Uh, I like it. He's like, you know, guy turns fifty, cheats on his wife, buys a Corvette. I go on Survivor. Awesome. I tried that with my wife. I'm like, look, Connie, it's midlife crisis. I can either buy the new Miata or I can have an affair. Which one do you want? And I said, and I, she goes, well, you're not going to have an affair and you're not having the Miata. So come up with something else. <laughs> you, can't turn, you can't turn 50. You'll be 49 for a long no. time. No. <laughs> so anyway, Abby finds her bracelet. Yay. And PG's bag. We're all so happy. And of course, she's not going to say, David, David. Mm-hmm. she's not going to say anything. No. All right. She, she's not going to say anything except to everybody on the tribe. Yes. Let's go to every segment of her talking to everybody outside of PG's range. Although PG is not dumb. She sees the private Abby conversations. That was hilarious. I'm not going to tell anybody. It's okay. Her way but of- she can stuff that bag up. Her- <laughs> good, good bleep. Her way of keeping a secret is telling one person at a time. That's how, yeah, that's how yes, she deals exactly. with it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but anyway. And so PG does really the, the, the right thing. Yeah. And it, 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 it was almost funny watching Abby because Abby doesn't, you know, Abby's like, wait a second. I'm not ready for this to be at peace yet. Right. No, don't apologize yet. No. Okay. Well, you know, like I said, I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Crud, why'd you have to apologize? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think she wanted a grander scale for the yeah. apology and something in front of the whole tribe or something. It's, yeah, she definitely wasn't satisfied. Didn't seem to be with that apology. Yeah. But it, anyway, it was great. You know, PG tried, PG handled it very well. Yes. All right. We're still on day one, David, and we're uh, 40 minutes in. So let's go back to Bayon. This is uh, this is the this, – this is what I wrote. This is the together tribe, and the other tribe, the Takeo is a little – sporadic and this tribe's a little more together joe's trying to start the fire we get a little bit of Cass. then we get fish back searching for the idol yes which was an interesting thing to watch but we've already picked on him enough so we don't need to do that anymore but but i, I did notice that they're like where's Fishback?" and they're laughing that he's going to get the idol yes. and that he's trying to do idol. it's like they're just laughing See, this is why I think if, if Takeo, um, I'm sorry, if if Bayon had had lost, you, you know, I did my little. You'd have, you'd have been second, exactly right. Right. So I did my my 70 second. Dwayne's driving. I was driving in my convertible, and I videoed my prediction. See, this is how I drive. I noticed <laughs> I that. That's why I don't ride with you anymore. <laughs> and I was uh, did my 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 prediction, and I predicted Fishback would be first out. I think if if Bayon had lost, he might have been first out. I think so too, because that's what you do when somebody's off looking for an idol. You turn to the whole whole, whole tribe and take a poll. Yeah. First out, first boot. Okay, good go. That's right. And then Tasha leads a worship service after Joe starts a fire. <laughs> Not really. But it was kind of fun. That they were awesome. all. Hey, you know what, Joe? Way to go. Oh yeah, starting a fire without Flint, without all the stuff. Right. That was awesome. Heck, whenever you played Durham Warriors Survival Challenge, y'all sat there for three hours with Flint and couldn't get a fire started. Yes. Just so. just saying, David. But we were still comfortable. I mean, how long have we been doing this podcast, and how many times have you said, if I'm going to go play, I'm going to know how to start a fire, and yet 
Did you start a fire? Uh, I never got the flint. Did you? Did you even try? I or did Lisa just I, I was, like every I, time you went to strike, she took it out of your hand? I was in line to try. I was given a number to be in line, and I never <laughs> got the flint. But then again, Lisa, Lisa was giving out numbers. Yes. <laughs> and then she, she was she was all the even numbers, and y'all were the odd ones. And then after a while, she was the odd ones too. So. <laughs> All right, back over to the Misfits, to KO Day 2, unless you have something else. No, I like that. I took it a fire. little um, sign from Savage when you talked about Joe. He's just in awe of, awe of Joe. And I think this was a great – this was a strong Joe episode to make Joe look good, which I think is not going to be good later on. Oh, really? Yeah, but Savage saying this was a great sign of things to come, that they got fired, that they were happy. I'm like, oh, yes. that means they're going to win the challenge. Okay. So oh, that, okay. that was my thought, yeah. A little premonition there. So Vetus and Kelly are doing yoga. Boy, I, what is it? Does everybody in California or whatever do yoga? I guess so. I've tried yoga. It is it is very hard. I've tried yoga and it didn't taste very good. So ah, That's yogurt. Well, that didn't taste good either. So. so on my P90X stuff, as you can see, yes. On my P90X stuff, there's this like hour and a half yoga. I'm like, are you kidding me? Ugh. <laughs> and and these people do it while they're on Survivor Island in the sand. Yeah. Anyway, so Varner and PG go to cool off in the water, and that's about the only strategy talk we got the whole game, the whole show, isn't it? Uh, well, no, we got a lot more strategy talk, but that was like one of the – that was interesting because it was like they walked out in the water forgetting everything that happened on day one. It was, it was just day two, and they're saying, so what do you think about all the people up there? But you, yeah. you made a good point about how – the Bayon tribe was so comforting and getting along, whereas the um, Takio, ta- ta- whatever it is, Taco tribe, how they were um, <laughs> they were kind of Takeo, ta- ta- mix, mixing it up and stuff. And if you, uh, I think if you look at the combinations of who was mixing it, it was old school, new school who were mixing. Yeah. You weren't seeing old school people going at it. It's like they understood. And then the new school people were getting along, walking around, and they understood. But together, they were kind of like fire and water. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was done the same thing. And this is where um, we start getting more honesty from Varner. You know, I wrote that he's not pretentious. He's just being honest. He, he's yeah. not sure what to do right now. And that's going to be the big decision later on is right. which way does he go, old school or new school. I so, think Varner lasts a while. I think he does. Is he too. on my team or your team? I don't remember. He's on my team. But I think it. Um, I think it's going to matter how he handles next week because he basically turned on old school. He went with new school. Um, I like how they pretty much pointed out it was shelter people versus beach people. <laughs> and he goes, which ones are we? Because <laughs> I've done both. I've worked on the yeah, shelter like, and I've done on the beach. <laughs> well, PG asks him, which one are you? And he said, I don't know. I've done both. And that, I mean, that's just for, foreshadowing of his of his decision oh. coming up. So I thought that was yeah. really good. I just love these conversations. These are experienced people having real conversations, the stuff we haven't seen in certain past seasons. So I just I just enjoyed every segment. Except for the yoga. Right. I didn't enjoy Fetus' yoga. But otherwise, go ahead. Yeah. Now we get an exciting moment. It's the Kelly Wentworth 10 minutes of the show. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Where the points she, just keep on coming. For oh, the yeah, yeah. David's got Kelly on his fantasy team, and he got bukus of points. She literally doubled the next highest person, except for Vetus, but he got voted off, so he got 15 for that. But – um. Kelly playing it smart, you know, and everyone else. Why aren't you going out with Kelly? Yeah, that was my only worry is that she was by herself. So I wonder if she wasn't that far from the shelter or just said, hey, I'm going to go get some stuff real quick. It just took off. Yeah. that's You got to feel comfortable to go off by yourself. That That's pretty. Right. So I guess she did. Yeah. Well, she finds what she thinks is the immunity idol, and we can no longer call her Lady Wentworth. No, she said this, what I think, yeah, you're right. What I think is the immunity. <laughs> this, she didn't say it was. She said what I think is. No, no, is. no. I'm saying, you know, we can't call her Lady Wentworth. I mean, you know, the la- when you watch those 18th century shows, the, the ladies don't say shut the F up, you know. I think she said shut the front door and they just bleeped it for, for six That's ratings. what she, yes. Okay, she's Lady Wentworth again. No, she probably said the other. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. You're playing Survivor yes. Day 3. You think you found the hidden immunity idol. Things, they don't tell her what's... Things just fall out of your mouth. Yes. Yeah, just whatever. 
It's shut, whatever. Shut the Varner up. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> shut the Varner. Whatever. And then she stuffs it down in front of her pants. Well, first she puts and, it under her shirt and realizes that's yeah. a bulge. Then she, then she sticks it down the pants. <laughs> She's like, wait. Nope, can't have three. Takes it out, puts it somewhere, and then and then she finally decides she's going to read it. Yes, and she goes, "Okay, all right." So I shot the gun a little early there. <laughs> no, you know what it was. The cameraman goes, uh, "Before you go back to camp, don't you want to open it up and read what it says?" You know what? I bet that's exactly what. Happened. Let's get that reaction right now. And I did not ask her if that's what happened, so she has not told me anything that I should not tell anybody, even though I asked. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, but you're right, and I loved it, man. It talk about very detailed drawing on there. Oh, you know, yeah. there's no question where the idol is. You know, and this is this is one of the things that you know they told us preseason that some people didn't want to know about, but it only added intrigue to me. You know, interest because this is what I, who's uh-huh. going to take this step. This is what I've been waiting for for episode one. <laughs> Little did I know I'd get so much more great strategy talk and social social game. This is what I've been waiting for to see what's going to happen with this idol. Yeah. You know what's funny is when we first found out about this, I uh, excuse me, I messaged her. I messaged Kelly. I had no idea she found it. First one, day three. And I'm like, oh man, what a great twist! I mean, you know. And she's like, yeah, but do you want to take a chance of being seen? I was like, heck yeah, I want that idol. How did I know? Little did I know she was playing around. Well, since you messaged her, I also yeah. messaged her last night, and I said, "Did the room you were watching it with explode when you oh, yeah. when you when you reached back, you know, and did what you did?" She goes, "They will. We haven't watched it yet. It's about to come on in two minutes." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I said, "Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I won't sorry. spoil it for you. I don't want to tell you what's going to happen." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Day three, Bayon. They get tree mail. Joe, Kimmy, Cast, Fish Pack, and Tasha are doing yoga after the tree mail. Mm-hmm. I don't care about. Do you want to, anything about the tree mail? No, just that it was. I thought it was ironic. I thought it was appropriate that they brought back the very first challenge, right? The, well, the quest for fire. Yeah. So, uh, and I Joe also like. Me- also like. Sorry. Also like Savage. <clears throat> him talking about. I don't know. We don't know when exactly he said this, but we are one tribe. We are ten strong. We're going to fall. And oh, and yeah. I don't yeah. not name dropping Durham Warriors, but I got this from the survivors as well. We're going to be together. People are going to get tired. We're going to work together. We're going to have one voice shouting. We're going to do it as a team and keep pushing until we're done. And, and that's how you do it. You don't go up there with, with eight people wondering what they're going to do. You go up as a team. you got to have that mental strategy that you're going to do it as a team and win as a team. So right. that, I liked what he said. That was good. And we didn't see that from the other side. Right. All right, David, who said this? I don't do yoga. I get up, have a cup of coffee. I go to work like 99% of Americans do. Nobody wants to see me bend over and get all contoured out there and all that. I wrote, nobody wants to see me bend over by Keith. Yeah. You, you forgot the spin. He did throw in the spin at the end. That was awesome. <laughs> anyway, probably the best shot, the, the best camera shot of that whole scene was the camera guy has... Joe in the left foreground mm-hmm. and looking, you know, like Joe and Fishback trying to do yoga in the background on the right side of the yes. screen. Oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, Joe's having a lot more success with the yoga than old Vetus did. Yeah. Just saying. And it's, Tasha. It's all in the approach. Yeah, Tasha's going to have to ask for forgiveness for more than just the way she's going to play, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) So to contrast Joe's yoga, let's go over to Takeo and watch Vita showing Shireen the uh, puppy dog pose and all those other things. And Kelly, I mean, and Kelly and Spencer are just trying not to laugh. Yeah. You know. She's saying that he's flirting with all of his moves and all yes. of his lifts and stuff. And I love what Sheree said. She's looking at your idol. <laughs> Abby's like, I don't want to see Yeah, that. I'm not looking at his idol. I, I'm not looking at his idol. I'm looking for my bracelet. Or I did find my bracelet. Yes, I found my bracelet. <laughs> oh, man. And and that's where Vetus goes up to Abby. He's like, so how's your body? Or whatever he said. You know. Yeah. And, and he's t- like, my body's fine. Thank you. Yes. 
and then and we get the Vita. Yes, <laughs> she walks away, and we get the um, Vita saying, "I'm getting bad vibes," you know, from Abby. I'm like, really? <laughs> bad vibes? I would say they're completely actions. <laughs> You're getting bad actions yeah. from Abby. So they talk about uh, Terry talks to Vetus and and I think Kelly, yeah, Wigglesworth, and says we have Spencer. So if if we have to, Abby goes. You know, right. so that was one side of the equation coming up. Oh boy! All right, let's get to the immunity challenge. You want to? Yeah, because we got a lot of feedback to read. Yep. So they're playing for the yoga immunity statue. <laughs> yoga is a theme. Yes, the pose. Nobody can sit like that yoga statue is sitting. Sit. No. That statue sits there like that all day. Yeah. Well, anyway, <clears throat> they're playing for the immunity statue and a consequential reward. So, again, for the D&D Survivor Fantasy game challenge, <clears throat> this is counted as an immunity challenge. That's what it says on the TV, and it's not an immunity. Anyway, that's what we're calling it. So they don't get points for the reward they get. They got points for winning the immunity challenge. Mm -hmm. All right? All right, so I, um, let's see. Oh, I also believe that the only idol, okay, I believe the idol was only there because Kelly found the clue, okay? I don't think that these idols are placed in the challenges unless there's a clue leading someone to find them. So saying that, I don't think that the Bion tribe had that same idol hidden on their side. Because no one on the Bion tribe found right. a clue, and that's that's been confirmed. We read that today. At, oh, has that? Yeah, okay, and okay. I also got it confirmed in a mess in a in a chat message that yes, the oh, other, okay, good. The other, it, that okay. is the rule. You have to find a clue to get it planted. Do you think that's right? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Because she could have Kelly could have gotten somebody's attention and told somebody else in the other tribe to get their idol and then made a friend to the end. You know, I don't know. Why not? No, 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 no. I like it. The, the idol's not there unless you found a clue. Because, and then it's for you and only you. But that's not how the other idols have been played. They've been hidden out there. Some people find them without clues. What? Are you pulling the we've always done it this way card? No, I'm just... That we, we've never done it that way card? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> okay, you got, you're right. This is a good twist, man. I like it. Oh. I like it. I like it. Okay. Man. But, I, I mean... I guess there's an argument for it should there should be something on the other side too, but yeah. But anyway, so uh, Spencer and Keith doing the torches. Takeo, by the time they reach the beach, Takeo has a big lead. Yes. And at first, I thought Kelly had just passed it up and made a stupid thing and just didn't even try. But when I went back and watched it a little better, um, or more closely, I should say. I think the reason why she passed it up, and again, I haven't asked her about this, but I think the reason why she passed it up is because Venus was like turned around facing the ocean. He was a foot from her, yeah. Yeah, and he was like facing the ocean for like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I think she said in the confessional that she was worried if she missed her chance. That's what she was thinking as soon as she got to the mat, right. that I missed my chance to do it. Yeah. But yeah, wa watching her the whole time, it's like she's... You know how you can tell how someone's balancing? She's like, okay, any second. And, boy, she was a lot closer to it than I thought. She just basically took one step, reached underneath, pulled it out. Yep. Thank thank the good Lord she didn't have to get underneath it and untie it. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> what I was wondering, how, how knotted it was going to be. And did she know it was knotted? She just reached under there and hoping it was there. Or she didn't know yeah. what she was grabbing. And I went this today. I shamefully counted when I was watching with Davis. The camera got her eight times. And on the ninth time, she actually went, went down there and grabbed it. So I'm like, yeah. what? How how suspenseful was that? That was I, I could care oh, less man. about the challenge. Great. I had a feel. I had a, yeah. Joe was going to get that key before anybody else. Kelly just wasn't making it long enough. But that was just incredibly intense and awesome. Yeah, and she had to time it, not just so her tribe wasn't looking, but so that the other tribe wasn't looking. Yeah, she had to wait you for know? the high point where everybody was paying attention. Right. I mean, but this was it to me. This was like the payoff of the episode because this is what we've been wanting to see: who's going to die, who's going to stick their neck out there, who's going to do right. it, can they do it? And sure enough, it was in a way that it could be done secretly. Yeah. So, way to go, CBS. Excellent, excellent. And I believe Dalton Ross has been telling CBS to do this for years. Mm -hmm. So, kudos to Dalton as well. Uh, 
Joe gets the key. Uh, Bion wins immunity. Kelly Wiggles is uh, Wigglesworth. Sorry, is so disappointed. Mm-hmm. But everybody, you know. Meanwhile, Wentworth is trying to look sad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's sitting there going, "We lost." Yay! I have the idol. I mean, exactly. We lost. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, uh, in the chat room, Mike K said that Kelly also mentioned that Shireen turned and yelled for her to get on the mat so they could start the jailbreak portion. So apparently she didn't quite get ah. on the mat when they were, I guess when they were starting. So, yeah. but, um, I know I, I, I was, it's like one Kelly's crying, the other Ke- Kelly's a little excited, you know, I'm okay. Yeah. Now that was a, you know, that was a box. That was a good two to three inch by two to three inch box. Yeah. You know, I mean, and she stuffed it in the back of her pants. And and I was thinking, you're on the front row. If I'm on the back row, I'm looking down going, why does she have a huge bulge in the back of her pants? Now, don't they wear microphones at travel? Well, that's true. So, yeah. well, I mean, she would have had that. That's usually where they put the pack on the back of their shorts. She wouldn't. Well, yeah, I guess if, if, if they repack them, uh, like after the challenge is over for the conversation, mm-hmm. maybe with pros. But anyway, so way to go, Kelly. Absolutely did not disappoint. Absolutely wonderful. And regardless of it being Kelly, the uh, twist was amazing. Yes. And it worked out wonderfully. Big payoff. You know? And it made the challenge all that more interesting for us. And how shocked were you when he said, and we're going to tribal council right now? I was surprised. I got up and applauded the television. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Way to go. Way to go. And then I thought, they don't get to talk at all. Nope. Not at all. None. There is no time. Because once they tell you you're on lockdown, that no talking. They get they take you separate boats, separate whatever, and you are not allowed to talk. And then they take, you know, they take you to the medical tent and you sit in there and wait for it to get dark and all that kind of stuff. We know all about that. Yeah. So and meanwhile, Kelly's got the idol and oh, oh man. Before, before we leave the end of the challenge, Kit Wigglesworth was saying, you know, I blew it. You know, I blew it for my tribe and standing yeah. right next to her is Shireen, who also kind of blew it for her tribe. The first challenge in Worlds Apart where she couldn't get that puzzle going. So yeah. I said, oh, how, how convenient. She's standing right there. So how much of the vote do you think had already been talked about? I mean, obviously, they they hadn't made final decisions Mm -hmm. because they didn't know they were going to lose or whatever. And they all thought they were going to get to go back to camp anyway. So, I mean, was it Varner that said everybody knows what they're doing already? They're just Yeah, I I think what Kelly had said about um, wanting Vetus gone, he just needs to go first between her and Spencer and Shireen. And possibly PG. And then, like you said, Varner was saying, um, are we sticking to that plan? So was it, let's see, it was, yeah. it was it six to four? Yeah, six to four. Yeah, it was six to four. So Spencer, Varner, Shireen, Kelly. Oh, I have that, I have that Abby, written down. You want me to tell you? PG, yeah. Uh, Abby, Kelly, Spencer, Shireen, Varner, and PG voted for Vetus. Yeah. So. <clears throat> okay, so you knew Shireen was going after Vetus. And Kelly wanted Vetus gone. And you knew Abby wanted Vetus gone. And Spencer was tight with Shireen. And Varner, uh, he was talking with uh, with PG. And PG and Varner, or, and we know Varner was also with Spencer. So there you go, man. There's your alliance right there. Yeah. <clears throat> I wouldn't want to be on the other end of that one. It's kind of PG and uh, Varner in the middle, as both could be old school. Although PG yeah. wasn't as old school as Varner, but still, she's not from yeah. the new school group. All right, so Tribal Council, um, he talks to a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Wu talks again about old school and new school. Um, Abby talks about it's all about growth. There's a couple times she could have been a firecracker, but she counted to 10. Yeah, she also talks about male versus female. She, she brings that up here. Yes, right. And Varner, people know what's happening. Oh, Vetus is the one that says it will not be a random vote. Right. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's already pre-planned. It's already set. But still, it wasn't as pre-planned and as set as it would have been. Mm-hmm. You know? And then Wu, typical Wu, I don't know where I'm going. 
I don't know what I'm doing. From what we've read, it's true. <laughs> he was yeah. he wasn't quite sure, but he looked surprised when it was done. Yeah. Oh yeah. He had that typical Luke Wu look like what? Yeah. What happened? So then we get a great Varner line again. Uh, I'm getting very little sleep. It's a whole different world, but I'm playing balls to the wall. Yep. I just thought, you know, way to go, Varner. He says what he thinks. Yeah. He and I had a pretty fun exchange on uh, Twitter. I don't, I don't know if you read it, but it was funny. You should go back and read it. What is Twitter? Funny. Oh. What is Twitter? It's this, it's this social media. Yeah. By the way, I have, I have discovered that as a 46 year old man, I am not welcomed on Snapchat. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I am not welcomed on Snapchat. There's no one my age on it. And so, you know, I know a lot of people. So I'm like, okay, I'll add this person as my friend. And they're like, uh, no, you're a 46-year-old man. You're not following me on Snapchat. I have like two followers. I'm just going to get rid of the whole thing. I mean, it's like, uh, anyway. Anyway. So, uh, Jeff, is there an elephant in the room? Yeah, there really is. There's <laughs> there's a, yeah, right behind me. And then probably one of my favorite. Oh man, this is just it. Just shows you how much this means to Varner. You know, very serious. This is an important night. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, this this game is more to Varner. It, it goes back to his midlife crisis thing he was talking about. Yeah, that he's that he's not having one. But it just goes back to that. He goes, you know what? I'm 50 years old. I'm starting the second half of my life right here, and I'm going to make the most of it. Yeah. He, and I, yeah he, just, said, he said instead of a midlife crisis, I'm doing a midlife quest. Yes, exactly. All right. So then we have the vote. And that, my friends, is the recap of the show. Way to go. Excellent, excellent show. So now we have uh, some feedback, some listeners' thoughts. And if you want to leave feedback on a future show, the deadline is 8 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday night. You can go to stwdd.com slash feedback, and there are the links to do that. So we've got six emails, and after that we have a new segment, Best in Show, that we got the Survivor Cheat, excuse me, Survivor Cheat tweet, kind of what's going to happen next episode, which you we may... Uh, Save that to the end. A couple other stuff coming on, including, you don't want to miss this, Mikko's Challenge. Great part of the show. Yep. So, wow, we got a lot to do. I know. See, this is why we may do only one podcast a week, but it's long enough that you can listen to it over the course of the week. I, I listen to a podcast where they sometimes take commercial breaks because they need them. We might need a commercial break tonight around 1145. <laughs> Halfway no. through. You know what they do, David? They record the whole podcast, and then they put in the commercial break. No, they actually get up. You can hear them getting up from their chair and oh. going to the other room. Well, you know drinks. what? If we had paid sponsors, we'd get up, too. That's true. Go. <laughs> we don't have any paid sponsors. We depend on you wonderful people, our D&D &D patrons. Boy, y'all are amazing. So thank you so much. All right. First, are the first ever feedback after the season premiere for Second Chance is from Lazarus. My name is Lazarus. Anyway, uh, and David's reading Lazarus. So go ahead, David. Hello, gentlemen. This is Lazarus, a new listener. Great show from what I've heard so far. I'll leave a review on iTunes. Oh, so he's calling our show a great show. Oh, thank you. Before. So don't, thank you, don't go back to the first season. Don't go back much further if you've liked what you've heard so far. <laughs> <laughs> that that That's when we have our little Plantronics headphones. Yeah. We're both in big rooms. Let's see. All right. Hello, David. Number one. Abby is not going to learn anything, it appears. I hope that if she turns old ways, uh, as the preview suggests, she doesn't get dragged along for the ride for goat purposes again. Why not? It'd be fun to watch. I don't think you're in the majority of that. I mean, but in that train of thought. Like so. Abby. Number two, I do not like the Vetus vote for challenges over Abby. Good point. Uh, because now she can't sit out because they're one player short. She doesn't need to sit out. She doesn't have a sprained ankle. Last time she sat out, she had a legitimate reason for sitting out. Anyway, number three, I did not like how we saw very little of the actual strategy talk. Most of it was PG Jeff in the water and a few others talking around that time. I would have liked to have seen more talk about why to vote Vetus over Abby. Well, I think we missed that because they never went back to camp. Yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, I, they even shocked the cameraman. Yeah. But I, I, I agree with you, Lazarus. I like the strategy talk, too. Uh, yes, number, David po- does. Point number four, Jeff is my overall pick. I really hope he doesn't start overplaying. Week two and wanting to go after threats in your own tribe. Come on, man. That must be about the preview for next week. Yeah, see, I didn't, I, I didn't get to see the preview for next week. I have to go back and watch it again. Uh, love the premiere. Excited for the season. Looking forward to the next episode. So are we. Thank you, Lazarus. By the way, if you are new to our show, we not only read your feedback or play it if you send us audio, we also talk about it. If we know you well enough, we might joke joke on you about it. But if, you know, only those people that we know well enough to be able to do that. Next, we have Miko, who also has the cha- does our Survivor Challenge. Not the Survivor Challenge, but the Miko's Challenge, just for me and David. Mm-hmm. Here it goes. I loved every minute of it. I loved Kelly's gameplay and, more importantly, how she was portrayed. I loved all the pointless drama Abby was creating, and I loved she was still not voted out for it. I loved Fishback's Fishback Out of Water storyline. I loved the tone of Cass's edit. Maybe she isn't a dead woman walking after all. I loved Venus's awkward edit, which made me facepalm several times. And I loved that PG and Varner sided with New School, even if I'm not really sure how much sense it made for PG. See preview for next week for further evidence. The only person I hoped would have gotten more screen time was Monica. Well, yeah. (laughs) And every male in America. Just kidding. (laughs) But there's still time. What's interesting in that... I'm sorry. What's interesting is that even her only confessional of the episode was somehow linked to this theme of avoiding past mistakes and personal growth. It's interesting to see if this ends up being a carrying theme of the entire season. Well, I think it will because it's called Second Chance, so they're going to focus on that. You think so? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Now, oh, well, don't read that. No, don't read that part because that goes into the challenge. So I added that. I shouldn't have added that part. Um, All right. I do, so want next, comment, uh, I do want to comment, though, real quick, that he talked about right. um, PG choosing new school over old school, which kind of gives a little credence to who they feel has got a better handle on the tribe, maybe running the tribe. And uh-huh. I think, I mean, he obviously went with them. I don't think it was Varner's decision to vote Vetus. I think he went with the group that he felt could get him further in the game, who right. he felt like had a better handle. So give credit to Kelly and um, – to Whitworth and Shireen and Spencer. And, uh, that, I mean, that's pretty good. So that's what he chose yeah. to go with. Yep. Thank you, Miko. <laughs> Next, we have graphic artist Steve Tarantino, and David's going to read it. Hello, D&D. Yoga time, baby. A lot of yoga on Survivor, and I should say, yoga. Finally, Survivor is back. Love it. Like to see everyone back from Survivor. Some people I'm happy to see, some people not so happy. Hey, Kelly found the idol. Sorry, the clue to the idol. Happy she found it, but I found it funny that it was found before the challenge. Um, that's okay. Team Kelly, hashtag Team Kelly, right. I'm guessing the other tribe didn't find the clue. I'm sure they got the same clue, right? I would think they did. Um, they probably got the same clue, but yeah, yeah. they didn't. They obviously didn't find it because it wasn't there. They wouldn't have shown it to us. Right, but why does? But I, but I wonder, Steve. Maybe you can elaborate on our Facebook group why you think it's funny they found it. Oh, he's thinking she found it right before the challenge. Well, we okay. don't know if that's true though, because it could have been several hours before. Yeah, we 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 learned that from Tony that they don't always line up. Yeah, when they yeah. find stuff, but it, they did show it right before the challenge. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Vetus was touchy on Wednesday, right? <laughs> Right. I, I didn't feel I didn't feel right seeing this. Just think if there were no cameras on him, what would happen? Oh, that's not fair. That's not nice. Maybe that is how he is or flirting. Uh, there is a lot of talk on Facebook about people that were voted back. Well, oh, hold ahead. on. Hold on. I just think that's I don't think Vetus is being inappropriate. I think that's just Vetus. He's a very touchy person. He's a very let's let's connect deeper than just hello. You know, I mean. I kind of feel like that. That's just the kind of person he is. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. I think he's. I think he's one of those people that is is personal with his students or the people that are in his right. class. He's just very personal. So, right. Um, there's a lot of talk on Facebook about people that were voted back on the show that shouldn't be on the show. 
For, for me, I'm sure there are people on Survivor that Survivor wanted back. What do you guys think? Do you think all the cast was voted back or Survivor brought people back? All right. You want to take this first or me? Yeah. I think that Survivor did their – or CBS did their part in that they gave us a group of people from which we could choose. And then – I'm going to take off any conspiracy hat and say that I think they let the votes go where they wanted to go. And those were the people, but they have, but they were confident in the group of what was it? 30 yeah. people, but see, they, they narrowed it down to 30. They didn't just let us vote for anybody, you know? Right. So I, I think of those 30, they would have been happy with any 20 of those 30. And so that's kind of where, I mean, if, if you think about it, it was really two groups of 15, 15 guys, really only 14 guys because they knew Mike wasn't going to be able to do it. Right. So, you know, 14 guys and 15 girls, I I feel like they were happy however those things worked out. So, yes, I do think CBS had something to do with it, but beforehand, and I think they allowed the votes to go the way they went. Now, we know Dan Foley doesn't agree with me. Listen to our last podcast. You'll find that out. But what do you think, David? I'll agree with you. I mean, obviously, okay. CBS is going to have a hand in it, but I think most of it was before in creating the ballot. Yeah, I, yeah, I do too. All right, uh, rumors that rumor that it they are going to split the two tribes into three. Myself, not a fan of this. Less airtime in each tribe. I guess we will see. I guess we will. Okay, D and D. Catch you next week. Keep breaking out the Great Survivor slash movie podcast. Yes. See, Steve, the graphic artist. But one more thing. Love the new website. I do too. Uh, nice job on the sites and the graphics. This coming from a guy that does graphics. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Nice yeah, I decided I was going to surprise David because I don't spend enough hours on Survivor Talk and Movie Talk. That uh, <laughs> We did roll out a new website look. Um, I think it's a lot more user-friendly. You can get to stuff much, much more quickly. And it incorporates both our shows, Survivor Talk with D&D and Movie Talk with D&D. And uh, so, unfortunately, it's still stwdd.com, but hey, that's all right. David. So, thank you, Dave, Steve. David, go look at the new site. Well, I'm kind of in the middle of the work. You will go look at the new site right now. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I haven't slept that's in two right. days. Go look at the site. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> that site has kept me up, I promise you. Yes. But now I think it's done. And thanks to uh, Patrick, who is in our chat room right now. Patrick, thank you so much. He actually... Uh, he actually recommended this this design, and uh, he designed the front page. That that front page, all Patrick. And then he let me tweak it and stuff. Yeah. So thank you, Patrick. All right, next we have Andy Westover, and he is the one that is doing our Facebook version of the D&D Survivor Challenge. So I've been so excited for this season, but afraid of being let down early on. The first episode did not disappoint. There was a pleasant amount of strategy, player and character updates, and both good and ill-advised social play. We also had our first taste of the reformed Abby Maria, not telling about 37 different people about PG allegedly taking her bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in an incredibly long string of out-of-context inappropriate Jeff Probst comments, yes, yes, which we don't talk about on the show, but they are they there. They are there. And you have the makings for a great episode. With that said, I have three quick comments on players that stood out to me in this episode. Number one, Jeremy. I love Jeremy's strategy of aligning with the other alphas and especially with Joe as a meat shield. Since I still don't think Joe has much strategic game, this should serve Jeremy quite well. Spencer. Spencer really impressed me. Me too, by the way. He set himself up well, apparently, with his initial alliance, is working to develop relationships, working hard, and keeping his, out, his outrage and snarky comments to his confessionals where they belong. He could be longer for the game than I initially thought, which I'm happy to see. Me too. And then <clears throat> Kelly with two E's. I don't know what else to say than that I am so happy for Kelly Wentworth. Her social game and alliance building seemed to be solid early on, and her careful idol search was very well played. I was nervous that, after all of that, she wouldn't be able to get the idol, or that she would get caught, but she pulled it off. 
She's been a peg. She's been pegged pregame as a front runner for the season, and episode one does nothing but support that in a major way. Well done, Kelly. That's all for now. Andy Westover. I wonder. If, to, yeah, I wonder if, if Jeremy worked with Tosh and that he pulled her into that Alpha Alliance, but at the same time got her to pick out one or two other females that she would want to include, just so to make sure they have the majority. You know, oh, in sure. case they yeah. wanted to get rid of Joe, you know, before. But who would it be? See, I don't really see Tasha being close with. I mean, we know she doesn't like Cass, or we assume she, Tasha she could like get him. Sierra and Monica. Because she, I don't know how rather close she'd than be Kimmy, with Kimmy. You think she'd rather have them than than Kimmy? Well, there's the age difference, you know, the year and survivor difference between them. That Monica would be closer. Mon- I think Monica is going to be willing to work with anybody that approaches her. You know, we didn't see a whole lot of that in Sierra. Yeah, we didn't get. And Sierra's yeah. pretty smart, so I think Tasha and Sierra could hook up. Yeah, but that, Monica and Sierra are the two that like. Did they even play? Did we hear anything from them? I think I heard one confessional from Monica and, and one or two from Sierra. I don't know if Sierra got any. Just a second. I may be thinking the pregame confessionals. Sierra, Sierra got two confessionals. Yeah, Monica got one. Mm-hmm. Okay, well there you go. All right, next we have Brian Marion, and David's going to read it. So Kelly is the only one out there at this point who knows idols are being hidden at challenges. Excellent point, Brian. Yeah, that's a good I point. I didn't think about that. Good point. Oh, I thought about it. I just didn't say anything. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know I had an idol? Yeah, I knew you had an idol. I just didn't say anything. Yeah, I knew that. A situation that will never happen again, by the way. What, that idols are being hidden at challenges? No, that she's the only one who knows it. Oh, okay. This is, oh, this that's is a right. first. That's right. It's kind this of, is a first. That's right. Uh, stepping okay, into- let, let me let me say this, because we, we don't mind going long on our shows, right? Sure. So, <laughs> sure. David's an hour later than I am. <laughs> How cool is that for Kelly? Kelly Wentworth, such a huge fan of the show, and she has this privilege of being the first person to be a part of this new twist that, if you ask me, is going to be a part of the game for a while. Yes, I agree. How cool is that? That is so cool. But even cooler is the fact that she knows it in-game. And nobody else knows it. Well, I bet she knows it. I know. She doesn't know if somebody else found that (laughs) on the other side or found the clues. Oh, I don't think they did. No, no, but I'm saying she doesn't know. She, She would think that, you know, they're hunting too, so... So All right. we'll move on because Brian wants to wear some high heels. Stepping into her shoes, what should she do if she sees someone on the other, on the other tribe go after the idol during the challenge? Hmm. If she spots someone she's not likely to align with going for her idol, she should call them out and blow up their spot shouting, hey, what's Cass doing? Without implying that she, Kelly, knows there are idols out there. That's an option, yeah. It is, but it's a risky option too because if yeah, you very risky, yeah. If you call her out for that, then they're going to know that you might know something. But but, but understandable. It's something you can think about. Now, if she spots someone she might align with later, say Jeremy, going for it, should she create a diversion to distract the other tribe? That would be awesome. Create a diversion, then look at Jeremy and wink. Yeah. Uh, what do you think she should do? She could. What do you think she could do? The, there are some hilarious options. She could accuse the other side of cheating, start cursing at probes, or act like a spider went down her shirt. Start, start, <laughs> start screaming and oh, about the distractions. Oh, st- <laughs> what? where'd that come from? Start screaming and flopping around <laughs> on the ground. It's not an idol; it's a spider. Yeah, I imagine if she were key, she would just jump up and start and down, shouting, "Look at me! Diversion! Diversion!" <laughs> stick, stick to the stick plan. Stick to the plan. Look at me. <laughs> Diversion. What do you think she could do? So what would you do if you're Kelly in the next challenge and you, you're you going to be looking at the other uh, other tribe? It's, oh, yeah. I'm going to be watching yeah. to see if any of them are doing anything. And if you see – wait a minute. If you see um, – let's see. Kelly, if you see Tasha going for something on a post that nobody else is going for. What do you do? I watch it and I keep it in mind, knowing that she has one. And if I ever get a chance, I can go, hey, I saw you get that idol. I wouldn't blow it up in front of everybody because that's your one. 
there's so much more you can do with it if you play it slow than if you just try to blow it up in front of everybody. Yeah, because if she makes eye contact and makes some sort of sign, that also tells the other person that she that you have an idol and you well, could become no, a target. It may, it, not particularly. It could just be that, oop, Kelly caught me. It doesn't mean that Kelly knows which, or that Kelly well, has an actually, idol. Either way, it can make you a target because if, if, if you caught me trying to get an idol – and we go to the merge. I'm either going to get rid of you if you don't approach me and say, oh, "What are you looking for?" You. I know, but if you don't know what I was doing, then I'm going to want to get rid of you. At the right. same time, if 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 you wink at me and and tap your back pocket, I'm going to say he must have his wallet or his cell phone or something. But no, then I'm going to say, "Oh, he's got an idol too." And if we don't hit it off, we're going to blindside you. So, it's, or you're going to think I'm hitting on you. So I think if I wink at you and start patting my butt, David, it's get into a puppy dog must. formation. <laughs> if, yeah, and if I go, I got some yoga moves I'd like to show you. Over so, so, so I think <laughs> <laughs> always back to the yoga. So I think um, on a serious note, I think the smartest play for Kelly to be to answer Ryan's question yeah. is do not let them see you see them. And keep it under your hat until the time comes okay. that you need that information. All right. If I'm Kelly, the first thing I do when I get back to camp is I go get some more pond fronds because the next challenge is going to have another one. Right? So I'm going to go try to find the next clue. But what she doesn't know is that the next one could be a fake idol. No, they're not planting fake idols. Yeah, there are some idols that aren't idols. Remember, there's some no, idols no, 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 out no. there that aren't. Yes, remember, there's some. they're all going to be look different. Yeah, they all look different, but they're not going to plant fake idols. They're just going to look different. I thought some idols weren't going to be idols. No, no, they're just all going to look different. Prope said oh. some of them will look like a four-year-old made them, and some of them will look like it came from, gotcha. you know, props department. Gotcha. So what might happen is she gets an idol and is like, what? This looks totally different. I'm, it's almost tomorrow, so I'm thinking that of both sides of my head. Go ahead. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> all right, let's do uh, the next one. This is Will the Giant Ninja. Uh. Uh, here we go. What's up, guys? It's Will from Wonder Lake again, a.k.a. the Giant Ninja. I try to say it like he does when he does audio. Yeah. Okay, so you remember last week when I said I'd have Vetus on my team even if I knew he was the first boot? I didn't. Honest. I'm shocked by the vote. So much for keeping the tribe strong. This is the new age of Survivor? Yay? Or do you think that was supposed to be A? Like a Canadian? Yeah. New age of Survivor, eh? Anyway, so Vetus getting voted out first doesn't bode well for the strategists. But at least Shireen, Spencer, Kelly, and hopefully Varner are going to be working together. If they'd like to dump Wu and Terry, since when is he deets, I'd be okay with that. And look at the firefighters. I'm sorry, let me read that better. And look at the firefighters are us 2.0 on the other beach. Jeremy's definitely, Jeremy's definitely getting his ducks in a row. Meanwhile, the resident know-it-all is a fish back out of water. Not looking good for Steven, but at least Cass shouldn't be the first one voted out of her tribe. And I love me some Cass. You knew it was coming. Yes. He said. I'm interested to see where the game heads next week, especially with Varner. Does he stick with Team Shireen or does he go back to the shelter people? And where does PG stand? Personally, I think voting Abby Maria out makes the most sense for the tribe, but I thought that for the first vote, so what did I know? Anyway, for my feedback this week, what? He's not done. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the intro. <laughs> this is like and, a loop feedback. Where loop yeah. goes off for a while. It's time for a commercial break. Oh, anyway, for my feedback this week, I'm going to go through the contestants. Yes, all 20 of them, Dwayne. And tell you what I think they were thinking when they first set foot on the island. Oh, this should be fun. So without further ado, I give you... First takes from the second chancers. Abby Maria. I love everybody here. I won't fight with anyone unless they beep with me and then they're dead. Sierra. This will be easy. I know I can vote out someone else's mom. Fishback. If I get voted out before the fourth episode, Sester Nina will never let me hear the end of this. Gotta find an idol. Remember, these are what they said when they first stepped on the uh, mm -hmm. on the island. Jeremy. Okay, baby, time to go to work. Last time I grabbed the women, this time I'll grab the men. Team Jeremy, here we go. Joey Amazing. I'm so pretty. 
Oh, so pretty. I'm so pretty and witty and bright. And I pity any boy who isn't me tonight. Yeah, we didn't even talk about Savage's daughters. Yeah, really. <laughs> I wonder what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, Joe, Joe's sitting there going, wow, I can't tell you what I'm thinking right now. <laughs> you know? Cass, I love me some giant ninja. <laughs> <laughs> okay, probably not, but I bet you laughed. Yes, we did. <laughs> Keith. <laughs> here's, here's Keith. Okay. This time, try to get one of them sub alliances. That that sounds good. Wonder what it is. <laughs> Kelly. Nobody notices me. That's okay. Don't stand out. You got this, girl. I think Kelly's going to not like my interpretation. Of it. <laughs> Kimmy, tone it down, Cap. Finger wagon is a part of the game. Don't freak out. Monica, I stood up to Russell. I can stand up to anyone. PG, man, is every season in Asia... <laughs> I hadn't read any of these before I read it. I just copied and pasted. All right. Continuing on with the survivors' first thoughts as they stepped on the island. Savage. Does everyone know that Jeff's my BFF? They won't vote me off for that, will they? Better not be any outcasts. Shireen. Gotta make an alliance. Gotta make an alliance. Gotta make an alliance. <laughs> Spencer, got to work with Shireen. Got to work with Shireen. Got to work with Shireen. Tasha, anybody but Cass. Anybody but Cass. Seriously, anybody but Cass. <laughs> Terry, work hard, Terry. That's the key to this game. People will respect it, and they'll keep you around for it. Varner, production made me wear this awful tie so that everyone would remember I hate tie votes. <laughs> Vetus, as long as I'm not voted out first. Wigglesworth, this show's still on? Really? <laughs> and then Woo, dot, dot, dot. That's all for Woo. Get it? Get it? <laughs> well, there you go. Can't wait to see what happens next week. Later, peeps. Will at the Giant Ninja. That was fun, my friends. That is our feedback. And now it's time for a new segment, Best in Show. Who stood out above the rest? David, this is your segment. You lead it. Uh, I actually had two for this week. It was a tie. I know we'd probably pick one, but since I'll go first, I get to pick two. Um, for one, it was Varner because of the decision he made. Um, even going back to Durham Warriors, the, the lady that won Wendy, made the right decision to vote me out when she was told to vote me out. And I think Varner, I don't know what's going to happen next week when he's going to deal with the old school people, but I think he made the right decision to go with the group, the um, strong group of the new schoolers, and vote out Vetus. But my co-best uh, in show this week is Kelly for taking on the challenge of getting the idol at the challenge, being successful, and having the idol. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, I don't. I don't think how. I don't see how anybody could argue that uh, Stephen Fishback was best in show. <laughs> best in best in swamp. <laughs> All right. No, I mean obviously Kelly Wentworth was best in show. I mean she got an immunity idol. Yeah. So and she killed in the fantasy league. So yeah, yeah. So we are going to. Uh, should we do the cheat tweet at the end? Because not everybody likes to hear yeah, the, um, we'll the what's going on next. Okay. So it is time, it is time for You Write Them, We Read Them, iTunes Reviews. That's right, your iTunes reviews help us and help others find our podcast in iTunes. Fresh reviews means a higher listing in iTunes, so that means when people look up Survivor or Survivor Cambodia or whatever and they click podcasts, they will see our podcast in the first eight or so which gets us more exposure. So we appreciate that. Also, it's fun to read your stuff. So we have two new reviews this week, and I will not read the reviews, but I will tell you who sent them. Will the Giant Ninja, 
sent another review. I guess he took off his old one and did another one. Five stars and titled the review D&D equals fun. So thank you, Will. And then the next person is JKMCP. And they gave us five stars and titled the review a top-notch Survivor podcast. So we want to thank you for your iTunes reviews. And uh, you can read those reviews, full reviews, and leave your own by clicking the link on the front page of our website, my friends. And that is iTunes Reviews. You write them. We read them. iTunes Reviews. I've been looking forward to uh, Miko's challenge all summer. <laughs> Last season, Miko started to really not like the episodes. Not ours, but yeah. the Survivor episodes. And uh, so he stopped sending in the Miko's challenge. Because, I mean, think about it. He's coming up with like 40-something questions for us within six hours of watching the show, you got to really enjoy this show to do that. I got 14 quotes for you. Do you have 14 quotes? For yeah, me? I got a bunch, man, a bunch. So for those of you who are new to our show, this is the part of the show where I get totally destroyed and David and Miko and everyone else laughs at me. Yes. My favorite, my favorite. Moment. But, but this year, this year is going to be different. This season is going to be different. All right. So, David, how are, well, first of all, it is time for... It is time for Mikko's Challenge. It is time for Mikko's Challenge. All right, so, David, do we want to do, like, every other question? Yeah, or do that's we how we did it last to... time. Let's do every other question. Okay, I, don't, I forgot my pen. I'm just so looking I... for mine. <laughs> oh, wait. Are we going to keep score this year? Because I, I mean, because I think I almost beat you last year. <laughs> I think by the last week it was already over. So, I yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to write down which ones you got right, so we can kind of keep track. Yeah. All right. Now, okay. Part of the thing that that y'all enjoy so much is, is y'all say that I get upset, and I'm going to try not to get upset this time. I mean, I don't really get mad or anything, but. If you're familiar with, what are you doing with your microphone? Trying to fix it. It's, it's, it's slowly going down. It's slow. Really? They have medicine for that, David. Yes. All right. Here we go. How about I read yours first? Okay. I don't know how many points these are worth, so we'll say they're worth one point each. Quote number one. Who said this, David? It's a rare opportunity to get a second chance. Um... See, I was writing, actually, when I went back the second time to write it, I started keeping track of confessionals to help Shane. I didn't know how fast she was going to get on it. And several people, the main people that said second chance were Kelly and Varner and Shireen. Um, it's say, a rare I, opportunity to get a second chance. I want to say that was Shireen. I think she said. David, you are correct. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it starts already. Go ahead. All right, quote number one for Dwayne. Uh, this means everything in the world to me. Varner. Yep, 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 yep. Holy smoke, I got a point. Got one right. Woohoo! All right, your next question. Oh, yours are easy. I don't know what you're worried about. David, you always get the easy ones. I'm here just to win. I don't care how I do it. <laughs> that was Cass. Yes. <laughs> David always gets the easy ones. David, you are correct again. So you're keeping right. track of my correct answers, and I'm keeping track of yours. Yes. All right, quote number two. Oh, please. Well, oh, please wasn't part of the quote, but here's the quote. <laughs> I wish I was more in my element. <laughs> That's Fishback. Yep. Oh, Miko, I love you. <laughs> Miko, Miko, you're amazing, man. You're amazing. All right. We are tied two to two. I really messed up my first time. I really messed up my first time. Wow, that that could be like every person in this game. Yeah. Um, uh, look at my pictures. I really that reminds me of Dan's first. joke he told us after after we went off the air last week. <laughs> That's an All off right, air that? Let's see. Who said that? Uh, I re and if you're in the chat room, you better not be putting answers up. Because I'm not looking at the chat room, and David is. That's not fair. 
don't look. See, 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 look at that. David's looking at the chat room. <laughs> you brought it he up. He is. Well, uh, don't look. I'm going to say you said it. Jeremy. Wrong. It was Sierra. Really? <laughs> yep. David, you are incorrect. Okay. Your third quote is, you make friends, but you keep your enemies closer. Hold on. That would be uh, PG. Yep. Mm-hmm. There you That's go. what I'm talking about. The t- turn of the tide is coming. That's right. Oh, my gosh. I'm ahead for the first time ever in Mikko's Challenge. <laughs> Wait. This isn't some plot. Y'all aren't patronizing me, are you? Would we do that? Yes, you would. Okay. This is, oh, this is cruddy. Now I can't even enjoy winning. Go ahead. No, it's your, it's your turn. It's important to work hard and be useful at camp. Oh, that was uh, Wigglesworth. Yes, it was. Good job, David. All right, here's your quote number four. Uh-huh. 20 survivors, 39 days, one. I'm just kidding. No, there. <laughs> that was really? a patronizing quote. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> No, y'all aren't trying to help me at all, are you? Okay. Quote number four. There is a huge difference between new school and old school. Everybody said that. I know. (laughs) But only one person said, word for word, there's a huge difference between new school and old school. (sighs) (laughs) If I start the word with does that make you happy or sad? <laughs> I'm here for you. I'm listening. <laughs> There's a huge difference between old school and new school. I'm going to say Varner. No, I get this wrong too. I thought it was maybe Spencer. Spencer. It was Terry. It? Dietz. Oh, it was Terry. It was Dietz. Okay. Yeah, I got that one wrong too. Ah, bummer. All right, we're tied. Three to three. All of your ducks getting shot by a rifle at once. That was in this episode? <laughs> Yeah, I knew that one. Really? Oh, 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 oh. Sounds like a Keith I quote. I knew that one. I knew that one. Here, I will read it again. All of your ducks getting shot by a rifle at once. Is, is that supposed to help me or throw me off? Supposed to throw you off. No, I'm just playing around. I've, I have no idea. So I'm going to say Keith. Sounds like Keith. It was not. It was Spencer. Oh. I think if you get it wrong, I should get it right if I know it. <laughs> You are really bending the rules here. <laughs> Since the answer is right here in front of me. <laughs> quote, quote, <laughs> All right, your turn. Quote number five. She's obs- quote number five. She's obsessed with her bag. Oh. Wait, hold on. If you miss it, we're tied. She's obsessed with her bag. Yes. Oh, that was Varner. Is that your final answer? Yes. No, you got the V right. It was Vetus. Vetus crab. <laughs> I almost said Vetus. All right. So far, you've got three right and two wrong. And did you? Same for you. Okay. So you asked me first. Quote number six. I'm not stupid. <laughs> That's Abby like 500 times. <laughs> yes. Abby, he wrote, yes, I know anyone could have said it, but she's the only one who keeps saying it over and over. <laughs> and it's hilarious seeing how she behaves in the episode. Yes. All right. Your quote number six. For the Mikko's Challenge, this is my time to make it happen. This is my time to make it happen. Joe, when he took Jen out on a date. Oh, sorry. All right. This is my time to make it happen. This is going to be an old school person, and I'm going to say Wigglesworth. Is that your final answer? Yes. No. Crap. It was Joe. It was? Yes, it was Joe. I said Joe first. I, I should get credit. I was about to answer yes, and you said no. Oh, no, no, no. I said Joe, remember? Oh, crud. Now you're we'll ahead. Leave, we'll leave it Dang up to Mika. Mika. Mika wants to give you half a credit. That didn't do that. Yeah, right. He ain't giving me half a credit. He loves it when I mess up. Go ahead. Oh, it's my turn. Yes. No. Oh, gosh. Ah. Oh. David. You always get the easy ones. No fumbling this time. Oh, you said this in the podcast. This was Keith. <laughs> yes, it was Keith. Everybody, you didn't even watch the podcast. Watch the show, you know he said it. All right, go ahead. 
Quote number seven. This Here we go. is a family. Uh, oh, wait. You said that earlier in the podcast. I know. And who said it? If you were paying attention. Andrew. If you don't get it right, that means you don't listen to me in the podcast. It was Andrew Savage. Correct. Quote number eight, my friends. I hope you're playing along at home, but not in the chat room where David can see your answers. They've only given me one right. answer so far. And it was like six minutes too late. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right, because they're they're behind yeah. by a couple of minutes. It would be so dumb for someone to mess this up. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was Jeremy. Yeah, you know this one. I'm, what? Jeremy. You said what? Wasn't that Jeremy? Is that your final, is that your final answer? Yeah. David. You are correct again. Jerk. All right, next one. Okay, quote number eight. You can't get yeah. stuck making the same mistakes you made the first time. Wow, that's Again, tough. anybody could have said that one. But nobody said it exactly this way. You can't get stuck PG. making the same mistakes you made the first time. PG. Is that your final answer? Yes. Correct. Yeah. She's smart. <laughs> she has a, she has, I think if they give her one time, she's going to have good confessionals. Cause she's just, PG she's has the cutest smart. freckles. Like right here. Cutest little freckles. All right, David. Quote number nine. Is this the way you do it now? <laughs> Mr. Varner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad Dan Foley's not on the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Quote number nine. Quote number nine for that's me. A, that's a great sign of things to come. Oh. Another quote I gave in the podcast. And that was Andrew again. Again, yes. All right. After nine, we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven right, and I have six right. All right. Number 10. I feel like I've never played this game before. Uh, Varner. David, you always get the easy ones. Go ahead. Quote number 10. Because because that PG one was a tough one. Yes, and I it got was. It. it was a tough one. See, I'm ready for this game. Quote number 10. The only thing that needs to change is their perception. That is Cass. That is right. And uh, Mick Raven says, love that quote, even though it might be kind of easy. That wasn't easy. No, that wasn't easy, but that was a good quote. All right, number 11. We call... Oh, really? Really, Mikko? Come on, come on. It's like bad medicine. Just get it out. We call it puppy dog. Go ahead. I would have to say... Stop trying to act like you're trying to figure it out. Beat us. Beat us. (laughs) And all the women are going, uh... What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, he must have done these in order. You ready for the next one? Quote number 11? Yes. I, oh, wait. Is it is it a Vetus? <laughs> I, I don't want to see his idol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you even said it like her. I know. That's Abby. You would have got it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Was it Sharita he goes, hey, he's trying to show you his Oh, no. Sharita goes, you're you're looking at his idol. He's, she's he's looking like, at your idol. idol. It's like, yeah, it's like, I don't want his idol. And then he says, come here, Abby. Come here. How's your body? All right, here's a quote. This is quote number 12. Yes, this Mikko's challenge does have an end, and it is coming. Uh, thanks for reminding me, Jeff. Oh, that was uh, one vote Wigglesworth, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Good job, David. David is holding on to his lead, my friends, so I got to get this one right. Quote number 12. I don't know where I'm going. Seriously? <laughs> yes. That's the quote. I don't know where I'm going. Think about it. No, that was Varner. No. That was Varner. It was Wu. Oh, yes, it was Wu. <laughs> I even said it in the podcast. I know. Grab a molean. Dang it. Urgh, now I'm behind by two. All right. I don't have a good feeling about him. That was also said in the podcast by uh, Savage about Fishback. Quote number 13. Uh, yeah, whatever. Train will only go as fast as its conductor will take it. What? No one said that in this episode. Yes, they did. No, they did not. We talked did. about it in the in the podcast. 
train will only go as fast. A train as will only go as fast as its conductor. That was said under what context? What? They're on an island, David. Are you serious? You don't remember this? No. What the heck context are they talking about trains? Who was our favorite confessionalist this week? Oh, thank you. That would be Varner. Yes. Remember he talked I about Shireen right was driving the train. Dude, she was pushing you just it. gave me an answer. Jerk. It was a pity I'll answer. take it, though. It was a pity answer. Because, You're right. Because you did say Joe earlier and I didn't stop you. <laughs> I honestly forgot he talked about the train. I was seriously going, what the, what? This is how Dwayne and I play. When Dwayne gets something right, it's not sure I don't let him know that he got it right. (laughs) (laughs) Last quote. I can make the moves that I wanted to make. Um, Lady Whitworth. Because she's not handicapped anymore. I'm sorry, but that's not what he wrote here. He wrote Kelly. (gasps) With two E's. So you get it right. Rear end head. Where's the, Go beat, ahead. Where's the beat button? <laughs> the quote 14. Yeah. You black. Gotta. Quote 14. It's important to have real relationships and know what Wait. people are, are thinking. What? Did you say it's important to have real relationships? <laughs> That's what it sounded like you said. <laughs> it's important to have real relationships. That would be Vetus. Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. It's important <laughs> to what? No, because he leaned over. Remember, he leaned over and he stuck his butt in everybody's face. It is after 11. Okay, sorry. Um, it's, <laughs> Go ahead. Im- it's important to have real relationships for pronouncing your L's, yes. and know what people are thinking. Oh, man, I hate this game. I got this one wrong. I always lose this game. I got this one wrong. It's important to have real relationships and what? And know what people are thinking. Who would say something like that? It's kind of deep. Stop patronizing me. Stop it. It's I'm not important to have anything. real relationships. And no, that would be Vetus. No. Crud. Who was it? I thought it was Fishback because I thought he was talking about relationships, but it was Spencer. No, that wasn't Fishback. That was Spencer? Yeah. Well, Fishback oh. talked about you either have the idol or you have relationships. So that's the quote I was getting mixed up with. You got 12... And I got, I got eight. Nine, no, eight, I got nine, ten. Yeah, nine. I got three, four, five, six, seven. I got ten. I got you with nine. I only missed four. Oh no, you're right. I got nine. Dag gum it. All right, I'll go first with these. All right. Now we have four multiple choice questions, and the way this works is if you get the answer right without the multiple choice, you get a full three points. If you need the multiple choice and you get it right, you get one point. Um, just just to rub it in a little more, the chat room now is playing for you and they're scoring better than you. So just to- <laughs> Oh, nice. Thank you, chat room. Golly, are you serious? Well, I mean, they've, they've only just started, but yes, they said, I can play for Dwayne because he can't see this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, chat room. Here's, oh, your, here's your first if multiple guest question. If I didn't want them listening, I'd call them something. <laughs> they are faithful. Right, They've been here ahead. all night. Um, which three people who have previously been pulled from the game made a cameo appearance on the premiere of Survivor Second Chance? One point per correct answer. All what right. did you just say? Um, well, he's got who, who three people. I think he just mistyped. Three people who have previously been pulled from the game of Survivor made cameos last night in the premiere of Survivor. They're not they're not of the twenty that are playing. Oh, oh, three okay. people scooping. Uh, scooping. Yes. Um Russell. Russell. Almost had a heart attack. Probst thought he was dead, Russell. Swan. Swan. Yes. Somebody else pulled from the game. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think of who it was. I don't know the third one. You didn't. Even, Are there multiple choices? Uh, no. Oh, okay. You didn't really get a look at their face. You really, I think, saw the. Yeah, the back. yeah, I, I remember, and that's why I didn't. I, I didn't because I, I didn't know who it was. I recognized because they had a red buff on. That oh, was I, I don't know who was it. It was Dana. 
from the Philippines. Yeah, I didn't know that. But I got two of those. Yes, you did. Awesome. I got two points. One. All right, David, question number one. How many players did Jeff call by only their last names when he introduced the tribes? Um, and I don't think you have to say whom they are. You just have to say how um, many. Lucky. Two. Are you seriously going through the list and you three, remember? See, if I ever four. get to play Durham Warriors Survival Challenge... Just because I'm on a podcast doesn't mean I know everything. David's the know-it-all. Um, I'm just the. I'm gonna say four because I think he called Kelly Wentworth. Kelly Wentworth, oh, and I know he called Jeff Varner. Jeff Varner, because I was kind of upset with that. He should just call him Varner. Fine, whatever. You got it. Oh really? Yes. Wigglesworth, Dietz, Fishback, and Savage. Oh, those were the four I had. Oh, I'm you're... just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, you know it. It gives me great pleasure. That I give everyone else so much pleasure by my yes. displeasure. You are keeping the chat room hopping because of your displeasure. So well, I'm glad. Let's go with your second question. Are you ready, chat room? Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the second person to have a confessional? Oh, come on. There are multiple it's guests the here. Second person? There are multiple guests here. I knew the first person. Who was the first person? Uh, first person was Kelly Wigglesworth. The second person is Andrew Savage. That is three points, my friend. Yes, it is. You got all because you didn't take the multiple guess. You, you just filled I in know. the point. Well all done. Right. Plus three. All right, David. Mm -hmm. Who was the last person off the supply boat? Joe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and he has two points on here, but you get three points for that. So. It's funny because he looked like he was on the barge. Cutting the rope, and then next thing you know, he's on the boat cutting the rope. Right. He's on the boat cutting the rope. He's on the boat cutting the rope. He had a machete in his hand. And... All right, uh, chat room, here's your next one. Question number three. Mm -hmm. Dwayne, you can answer two if you'd like. Name a player made hashtag shown on the screen. What? What? Name a player made hashtag shown on the screen. We talked about what? this in the podcast. We did not. Yes, we did. We talked about it. We didn't talk about it being a hashtag. We just talked about it. A player made? Yeah, like, yes. I mean, if I go into any more description, you'll get it, and I don't want you to feel patronized, so I won't say anymore. A player, you know how Rodney made all these hashtags last year, everything he said? A oh, player yeah. Made. Oh, okay, okay. Someone says something, and See, it got turned I just into a hashtag. Yes. No, you didn't give it to me. Now I know what you mean. I have no idea. Uh, but I'm going to guess. I would say Varner, because he said the most memorable things. But hashtags are usually like one word things. Am I supposed to say the hashtag or just yes. who did it? What was, what was the hashtag? Na I had to say the hashtag? Name All you had to do was say how many people. I had to say the actual hashtag? This is probably the easiest question you have of these. It is the not. That is freaking ridiculous. We talked about this. <sighs> I feel like a married oh. couple. We talked about this. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, hold on. Go back and listen uh, to the podcast real quick, and you'll, you'll remember what it was. Got to stick together. Come on, chat room. If you get it first, I'll give Dwayne oh, nothing. No, you won't. <laughs> Stop it. That's like playing tennis with somebody that's not as good as you and just kind of tapping the ball over. Like playing ping pong with you. Yes. Yeah, but I, <laughs> but I don't let up on you. No, you don't. You send so, me back. So I don't get to name the person. I have to actually know the actual hashtag. Well, forget it. I don't know the actual hashtag. Okay. So if you name the person, maybe you'll get points for that. Name the person. They made no, hashtag. I won't get points for that. This is Miko, and he ain't going to give me points for that. He's left. Okay. He's I'm going to say right. Varner, and I'm wrong, but go ahead. Tasha made a hashtag during yoga. Oh, well, that was yoga. And that was the hashtag. I think that was the only hashtag. So what kind of points do I get for that? You get zero because I gave you the answer. No, no, you didn't. You said Tasha said it, and then I said what the hashtag was. Wasn't there like a multiple choice? No, not for this one. What? It was either three or nothing? I'll let, if Miko wants to give you points, I'll give you points. Yeah, this wasn't a multiple guess. The next one's multiple guess, but that one wasn't. Are all mine multiple guess? Yes. Oh, well, all of yours, you all of yours, you have a chance to get. Ah. Uh, 
Who was the last person shown on the screen before the scene cuts to Cambodia? What? <laughs> if you get this right, David, I'm punching my monitor. And then I will have to go buy a so, new one. So I'm thinking it's the end, more of patrons. The, the end of the them getting I, I, onto the game. So I'm going to say Wu because he got on the bus. Okay, that is incorrect. You okay. have three options. Is one of them Wu? <laughs> Kimmy, Varner, or Joe? I'll say Joe. And even and Propes won't call him Varner, so I'm going to call him Varner. I would say Joe. Yeah. Uh, incorrect. It's Jeff Varner. Oh. No, it's Varner. Vana. Okay, I think I should get one point for the um, hashtag Joe Joga. Miko, Dwayne would like more multiple guest questions, if at all possible. I'm giving myself a point. Although it's his game. <laughs> it's so his game, vote. I was going to say. <laughs> it's like, it's like walking off the basketball court. That's yeah. 55, not 51. I'm just telling That's you right, right now. We won. <laughs> You're wrong. It's like it's like Pastor Ernie told you or told us one time he was sitting at a ball game and there was a guy with a speed gun, uh, doing all the pitches. Yeah, and it kept reading eighty seven and eighty nine, and the guy next to him goes, "That ain't, that guy ain't pitching eighty <laughs> seven. He's like, "It's right here. I don't care what that says. He ain't pitching eighty <laughs> seven. I don't care that it's, I'm wet. It ain't raining." <laughs> all right, go ahead. Uh, your last question. Uh, what are the tribes named after according to Probst? You can you can guess right and get two points. Temples. And that's two points. Temples. That's two points plus two. I only get two points? Maybe it's three points. Like the other like Okay. Th- you had one that, that, that was only worth two points earlier, and I just said it I thought it was worth three, so I gave you three. I thought he just had a typo. Yeah, some of yours so have maybe- been three, some of yours and this one was two. All right, well, then I'll give you two points for that question. I guess I get two points for that one. Uh, if he wants to change it, he can change it. All right, question number four. Who got the first post-intro confessional? Why is this one worth three in the um, um, That was uh, – it was Wu because Bayon was the first one to get there because they won, and Wu – I think Wu was the first one to talk. But I mean, Wu's not on Bayon. No. I keep picturing Wu with a purple thing for some reason. Takio, Takio, Taco, the Taco tribe. But Wu, because Wu was, they were celebrating. That Fine, they're you got it right, jerk. <laughs> you just want me to say something different. Oh, you said Kelly. It's, it's not Kelly. You're wrong. That, my friends, was. It is time for Mikko's Challenge. It is time for Mikko's Challenge. By the way, the uh, chat room got Joga right. Hashtag Joga. That's because they... That's because they watch That's because there's 28 of them. Or however many of them there are. All right. D&D Survivor Challenge. Now, David, we need to figure out a way to go through this quickly. Just read it. Or we can just tell them to go to our website. Am I doing it? I didn't print it. it? I I forgot to print it. You can just tell go to our website. Yeah, just I mean, how many people? Website. How many people will take it off the podcast? I mean, right. You can All just right. tell our scores. Okay, so David and I are competing. Well, it's the cool kids versus the nerd herd. Yeah. And David and Andy's team got 125 points. Their top score was Kelly with 28, mm-hmm. and then everyone else got like tens except for Vetus that got a 23 because he left. He got 15. Right. And then the cool kids, which is Dwayne and Steve's. We got 95, so we're 30 points behind, or 25% behind you. And, you know, our biggest scorer was Abby Maria with 14. So, you know, most really, of that was it, was, yeah. it was Kelly and, and, and Vetus that put David and Andy over the top. It was those two. Kelly is going to be my Mike, Holl- my Mike Holloway because she's not going to have to play that idol for quite some time. No, that was your Carolyn. No, just she's going to be my, my point getter. Oh, well, no, Carolyn I understand. You're right. Yeah, Carolyn had the out for a while. Game. No kidding. So and if you want to know how many points each person got, just go to our website, stwdd.com, and right underneath the featured is uh, the thing. Yeah, because you put a nice big button on there for people to find it. Yeah. All right, David, do you uh, – I think I've lost video. That's a yeah, you're frozen right now. 
All right. So, David, it is. Uh, do you want to do the next week on, and then oh. we'll close out the show in right at about two hours? How cool is that? That's pretty cool for a ninety-minute yeah. episode. Cool. I know. All right. So, our survivor cheat tweet, which is just a preview for next week. There's no cheating. There's no spoilers, unless you think these are spoilers. Um, the title is Survivor. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> You just wanted to do that when I couldn't see you about to do it. Uh, the title is Survivor MacGyver. Who do you think says that? Survivor Somebody, MacGyver. I don't have any idea. I'm going to say but we, but, I think, but we need to hurry up because I don't want to lose signal. I think Spencer. But anyway, uh, it says, One tribe is completely puzzled at a classic immunity challenge. Oh, I wonder what that's about. Also, one castaway attempts a heartfelt apology in an effort to stave off elimination before an intense tribal council. Oh. I think we know who that is. I don't. You do? It, it, it's got to be PG, I would guess. Why? She never apologized that we saw. It's not Apo- over. Apologize for what? For writing her name anything. on Abby Maria's bag. Oh, okay. I didn't hear an apology, but uh, it got straightened. But Abby Marie is not going to let anything go. If she needs a reason to vote somebody off, she's going to keep talking about it. So that's next week. And, of course, we will record our episode on Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern. Don't forget to look at our bloggers. There will be four blogs this week on our website. Uh, Tweet our website out. Let's get more people active on our website. Thank you for tuning in. You are absolutely the best and most amazing listeners in the entire world, and we truly appreciate you very much. Of course, a huge thank you to our D&D patrons who support us monthly with as little as a dollar a month, and uh, they also enjoy some patron perks, which is pretty awesome. They're not great, but hey. But anyway, for as little as a dollar a month, uh, some people give like six or more, and it's pretty awesome. We really appreciate it. Uh, want to join? Want to enjoy Survivor Talk all week long? Join the Facebook group, stwdd.com slash Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Survivor underscore talk. David, I was thinking about making Dwayne's driving predictions a patron perk. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I'm just going to do them every week and let everybody watch them. But I got to come up with another patron perk that, you know. We still still own a podcast. Well, I know we do. But we're down below. Anyway. So anyway, follow us on Twitter at Survivor underscore talk. Remember to check out our website, stwdd.com, for all of our episodes and our four weekly Survivor blogs. While you're there, check out our other podcasts, Movie Talk with D&D, and Shop Amazon. We love it when you do that. Any final words, David? Um, right after the episode last night, um, Durham Warrior Survivor Challenge champion of Season 3, Wendy Langford, was on, and we were just chatting. She had, she, she was loved the episode, loved it. And I said, you know what? They set the bar really high in this episode because of how good it was. But if they can keep the rest of the episodes at this level, this is definitely going to be a top five season for me. Um, really high. But I this was yeah. a great start, um, and I, I loved it. I loved it, and I hope they can keep the intensity and the entertainment up all season like this. Yeah. I am so looking forward to next Wednesday, and um, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It's a great season. Yep. Great start. Absolutely a great start. So, hey, we've got a movie talk to do. You know? Yep. We're doing Top Gun, right? Yes. At least I talked man. With Dan Foley. I got to tell you something, man. Um, just don't think of Dan Foley as a season 30 player. Just think of him as a friend of uh, D&D. And when he's on the show, it is so much fun. And having him do Top Gun with us is going to be absolutely hilarious. We're going to laugh more than we're probably going to talk. Yeah. And I get to sing the song. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. Nice. It would, it would be better if I could see you singing that, but otherwise. Um, but I think we should add a segment on the end of that movie podcast of telling our favorite jokes. I'll be more prepared this time because that was hilarious. I've been telling his jokes all throughout. Could you tell me the muffin joke again? Because I I don't remember it and everybody thinks it's hilarious. Two muffins are in a muffin tin in the oven. And one muffin says, wow, it's hot in here. And the other other muffin says, oh my goodness, a talking muffin. (laughs) See, it's a great joke. (laughs) 
Oh, that is good. All right, everybody. Well, David and I don't have anything else to talk about, and so we are going to let you go. Thank you so much for watching and for listening and telling your friends about us. That's all I've got. How about you, Dave? I'm good. All right. See you, everybody. See ya.